Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 78. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hello, Norman. Hey, Daniel, what happened to you? Oh, uh, well, there's a water cut in my area and it's been currently about 12 hours without water. Oh, well, so are you stinky? No, I bathe in the rain. <laughs> well, at least you got an excuse to play in the rain. It wasn't very fun. <laughs> Waking up in the morning to cold water, like it's like my parents back in the day, and they had to bathe in the well in the morning. Jesus, thank God I'm not that era. <laughs> oh, you wish you were. You wish you were. So there are no ponies back then. I don't. They were real life ponies. <laughs> you know what I'm talking. About. I know. I'm just playing with you. Anyway, moving on to our next co-host is Charlie. Hey, good evening, guys. Evening, afternoon, and morning. <laughs> yeah, it's always those times somewhere in the world. Wobbly, wobbly, timey, wimey. So anyway, Charlie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I had a good Independence Day. It's just past as a time of recording right now. <laughs> yeah, and the po- and since this show is... When this show is posted, it's been long gone. Yeah, time zones. Yeah, I hope by the time the show is posted, all of all of our listeners here in the Selango area who's affected by the water cut, yeah, I know what you went through. Well, I, I hope you guys get your water back because uh, living with no water is no fun. Nope, it's not. So anyway, I'm like thirsty. Mm, yeah, well, well, you could still drink Coke, Pepsi, and whatever beverages you have. Yeah, save water, drink beer. <laughs> uh, but anyway, our guest for this week is Scribbler, a fanfic reader. Uh, how would I put this? It's a fanfic. She's she reads fanfic and posts them on YouTube. <laughs> Hello, yes, uh, fanfic reader and audio bookmaker. Stealers of souls and vocal cords too, if I'm not uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? As the cast of my radio play will attest, yes. <laughs> Thief of souls, zero of soul, uh, vocal cords, and general bribe. So, as a cast of a radio play, do you consider yourself a voice actress as well? I don't know. I've never really considered myself a voice actress until somebody told me so- <laughs> told me I was. <laughs> So I just thought I was somebody who read stories, and they said, you're a voice actress, am I? Oh, yay, cool. <laughs> oh, that, that, that is something I'm new to discover. I have a voice actress? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that, a lot of things happen to me that people have to inform me afterwards. That's what I am or what I've done. They're going, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> you never know, there might be more things. Do you think you're a princess? <laughs> <laughs> I did when I was a kid. I made a crown out of an egg box. Oh, I, I, I wish yeah. I knew how that looks like. Right. It wasn't an R moment, it was rather hideous. I found it in a couple the other day. It was absolutely random and horrible. Uh, was it, uh, I was not a crafty person when I was little. I was not good at making things. So I went, here, glue, glitter, it's done. <laughs> Post it on the Tumblrs and the Twitters so the people can look at it. <laughs> I yeah, made a magic wand out of wasted do. electrical equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should have a competition and just see how many people can make crowns out of random things that they find. Yeah, the jump to that princess. <laughs> We've got princess of moon, princess of stars, princess of love, princess of, I don't know, books. We have princess of electrical equipment and princess of egg boxes. Princess of used vehicles and garbage <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> so anyway... I'm anyway. sorry, I'm laughing because I thought you said fecal, not vehicles. Oh my... Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Different show. <laughs> <be> after. <laughs> <laughs> different show, different show. After dark, not now, not now. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, I need um, to work on my English. Yes, you. So anyways, <laughs> well, uh, welcome. So anyways, scribbler. Um, we yeah. before we before we officially start, we need to ask you the four important questions. And mm-hmm. question number one is, who is your favorite character? Ah, uh, right. Uh, my favorite favorite character, probably Bon Bon. Oh, really? No. Yeah. Why so? Yeah, um, I just really like her. I like her design. I like the fan and personality that she's been given. Um, and also, when I'm reading things, I absolutely adore doing her voice because it's ridiculously stupid. The voice. <laughs> it's um, an old style New York accent I have to put on, and I love it every time I have to do it. Probably. I just like the fact that she's the, the grumpy one in the background, and that's me. Probably ask you to do it. Making comments. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. She's just so adorable and she's making those comments. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Lyra's so happy and Mom is there going, yeah, stop it. But we will ask you to do it later on the show. So, yeah. um, Bon Bon then. Okay, I, I think that's a first that's for a Bon first. Bon. That's a first. That's definitely a first. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mom. We'll go for the main six. No, we have Lyra, we have Carrot Top, but we've never had Bon Bon. Mm, and Rose Luck. Ah. We have Rose Luck once. We have Rose Luck as well, yes. Mm. Rose Luck. <laughs> what is David? Davenport. And Davenport. Magnum. Yeah. Mm, Magnum. <laughs> we never had a Bon Bon. Yeah. Really? Oh, oh, yes, she's mine. I claim mine. <laughs> oh. Magnum, though, not very nice. Also, also, anyway, um... What about your favourite episode? Mm, probably Apple Book season. Oh, really? No. A really early episode, but I absolutely love that one. The this animation... Is because, you know, there's no Bon Bon episode <laughs> just yet. No, there's no Bon Bon episode. Although, I don't know, they seem to be calling her Sweetie Drops all the time, so I think that would just spoil it completely. Yeah. Man, so, it's yeah. in it. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love her voices. Think, right, what are they going to give her next? <laughs> yeah. The mayor of many voices. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think now it's a running joke with her. Ah, from... <laughs> uh, boy. That one, I got that one next. Yes. Call that send it to the house, bro. Or VHX. Yeah, this is the new Bon Bon voice. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. This is going nuts. So, anyway, um, how did you become a fan of the show? I've always been a fan of My Little Pony. I grew up with them, um, the first generation. I used to get up early on Saturday mornings and go downstairs and huddle in my dressing gown with little teeny mini scribbler on the couch when it was still dark outside and watch on uh, this no, very, very old uh, British program called TVAM. It was the very first record show ever. Um, and they used to show My Little Pony episodes. And so I used to huddle there and, and watch them in the 80s. <laughs> and I used to have pony toys. I have one of the very first generation of pony toys. And she sits on my shelf and looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> She's up there at the moment. I have a collection of old pony toys from when I was a kid. And they just sit on the shelf and judge me. <laughs> oh. The ones that look like horses. Yeah, the ones that actually did look like horses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Recently I saw a picture from Tara Strong and she showed her collection... Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was a G1 and a, I, I'm not sure, it's a bit slenderish, um, slim there and... There well have been some slender ones. There's, they they had a couple in G2 where it was uh, flutter ponies and they went really skinny. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw those. Really, really skinny. Mm. And then everybody has the muck ponies, the little ponies that came in Happy Meals that were really ponies, called <laughs> them muck ponies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so you're considered to be one of the earlier adopters then. So were you excited when the fourth generation came out? Well, when the fourth generation came out in 2010, I actually watched on YouTube, uh, Sabine and Brittany, it wasn't on the telly. Uh, I watched Friendship is Magic, part one and part two. Um, and it had literally only just been aired. And I remember thinking at the time, well, eh, that's okay. Oh. And then moving on, because I'd been sort of disillusioned by G3. Oh. And, yeah. So yeah, we'll see how much staying power this has got. And then I went back to my fandom of the time, which was Yu Gi Oh. Oh. Deep into Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, you see, you see, Norman's eyes just lit up right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I was. Yeah. Oh. I was, well, I'm a big Yu Gi Oh fan. Oh. I can't play the game with Toffee, but I love the fandom. Oh, no, cool, cool. I, yeah. I, I was there too. I was there too. I stopped watching because of that new guy. His name shall not be mentioned on this show. You know who you are, you guy. You ruined the fandom for me. No, you ruined the show for me. Uh, ruined who? Who's? Never mind. <laughs> he shall not, not be mentioned. Well, anyway, uh, yes. Voldemort's in Yu-Gi-Oh. Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I know what. <laughs> That's not a word. Hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you expect when somebody with no nose goes into an anime where they have prominent pointy noses? <laughs> True indeed, and spiky hair. He's bald, so it doesn't work. Oh, yes, equally good point. Of course he was going to go in and ruin it. <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, um, you were in the Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom first and then you sh- um, changed to ponies? Uh, how does it work? Um, how? Well, how was it? Well, I'm female, so I can multitask. I've been in multiple fandoms at multiple times. Ah. <laughs> but seriously, I'm a, a veteran of fandoms. I've been writing fan fiction since 1999, year 2000. Mm-hmm. And I generally have multiple fandoms on the go at once. So Yu-Gi-Oh! was the longest lasting one I was in. It was, um, I'd been in X-Men Evolution fandom and Teen Titans fandom and the Batman comic fandom prior to those. And when they all sort of ended, I, a lot of the fans that I was friends with 
migrated over to Yu-Gi-Oh! So I just kind of followed them and got deeply into it. So from 2004 to around about 2011, 2012, I was a big Yu-Gi-Oh! fan to the point where um, on my fanfiction.net profile I've got close to two, three hundred stories wow. uh, that are just yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, I did right now. That's very impressive. That's a, yes, that's the chronicle of a body with no life. Um, yeah, I've got some like 470, 480 fanfictions on there. <laughs> wow. Quite a lot. 472 stretching all the way since 2001. That's really impressive. If this was yeah. a portfolio or this was a resume, yeah, I think you yeah. get a job quite easily. So you're looking for the role of professional fan fiction writer. Uh -huh. Well, that would be like being Christopher Golden for um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer who wrote all the tie-in novels and Nancy Holder. Uh, when I was at university, I was a big Buffy fan. I mean, I absolutely adored Buffy the Vampire Slayer and read all the tie-in novels because I had no internet connection. It was So I read these things and gobbled them up and that's pretty much how I honed any fan, fan fiction writing skills I had because I was, I was one of the worst fan fiction writers when I started. Oh my God, it was awful. That's purple prose. <laughs> I bought books. Everybody's been compared to gemstones. I have about six different adjectives every time I wanted to describe anybody. <laughs> purple prose. <laughs> It's Shakespearean prose, and I did a high school at you. Well, well, with experience, um, you get well, with every bad writing, you get more experience. So, yay! Yep. <laughs> yes. That's just. Yes. Like, I, I think heard of Nano Remo. Yes, I've done that before. <laughs> I did That's that one. With you. Yep. But um, I finished it. As oh, in, congratulations! Well, the, the project itself is still being posted. It was a big Yu Gi Oh fan fiction that I did. It's still being posted on fan fiction. Oh. Yeah, it was an ancient Egyptian arc one that's still going because the writing was not good back then, so I keep editing it. <laughs> but ponies keep taking over my mind instead. True indeed. And talking about ponies, um, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? They don't really know about it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they know that I like the ponies from when I was little, and they know that I've got the collection in my room. They don't really know the full extent of what it do one life. <laughs> so, and that's probably a good thing, because they would just rip... To say bad word, then they would take the urine out of me. Put that way. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh goodness! Oh goodness! Yes, my my mother is from Liverpool in England, and they do not take prisoners in Liverpool. They've just <laughs> really just read if they think you've done something stupid, or if they think you've done something <laughs> worth ridiculing. Like, thinking, yeah, I'm not going to give her cow fodder actually. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I thought life there was nice. And Quiet, nothing going on. <laughs> Have you not seen the soccer hooligans? Oh my god, yes. I've seen the soccer hooligans, but I've seen the local soccer hooligans. I thought they were bad. <laughs> I walked into uh, my friend's house and then there was this autographed ball that was from the Liverpool soccer team in his house. The first thing his father came out, he looked at me, which team do you support? And I said, uh, Real Madrid CF. And he's like, as long as you're not a Manchester United fan, you're allowed in my house. I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, because people in Manchester don't like Manchester United. <laughs> oh, really? My sister lives in Manchester. She's she's from um, the Midlands, the middle part of Britain, and she moved up to Manchester. And she said that the first thing she always gets asked is, "Do you support Man U?" No, good. <laughs> in Manchester. And down here, I have a classmate who has the Red Devil tattooed on her right leg. <laughs> but correct me if I'm wrong, isn't Manchester the home of two clubs, Manchester United, Manchester City? Yes, yes. Manchester United, Manchester City hate each other. I mean, hate each other. I love how the Malaysian car manufacturing company is the sponsor for Manchester City. Oh yeah, yeah, that was, that's true, that's true. I'm not really big into football, but I watch a lot of um, comedians. I actually love watching stand-up comedians. And most of them, at some point, have made a comment about the Man U-Man City divide, mm. even if they're not from there. Although there was one thing that um, John Bishop, who's one of my favourite comedians, um, his latest DVD, he, he's from Liverpool. He, they made him do his tour in Manchester and record it there. And he said, there's nothing quite like knowing you're the unifying factor when all these warring matches turn to you and go, hey, him instead! <laughs> <laughs> if anybody in Manchester, there's no way they hate each other as much as they hate Scousers. <laughs> so I am led to believe by my mother who is a Scouser. <laughs> oh, <God. clears throat> 
Well, at least we now know that um, <laughs> your family and friends don't know much about what you do online. So at least that's good. That, that one was a bit of a tangent, sorry. No, but true, true, true. And we also know that you don't say you like Manchester United when you're in Manchester. <laughs> no, and that's really good. You are, that was a real eye-opener for us Malaysians. Because here, I thought, as I said, I thought the football problem here was bad. Oh, you have no ideas. Oh. When Liverpool came here to do their visit, there was a shopping complex literally just flooded with people in, uh, was it, where the heck did they play? Anfield, you know. Mm. shirts and paraphernalia and all that everybody was like cheering them on it's like they're not even playing a game they're just in a shopping complex leave them in <laughs> peace yeah you, you think that Hollywood celebrities and acting things are big names and then you meet sports stars I'm just flabbergasted the amount of fame and money and prestige there is involved in this because it's not something I follow so whenever I, it pops up someone they're going really? really? <laughs> True, true. Same as goes with the pony voice actors. <laughs> they don't yeah. follow football either? I don't follow football now. Oh, you know what I mean then. Anyway, um, thank Oh, right, right. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Um, thank you, Scr- uh, Scribbler, for answering our four important questions and opening our eyes to football or soccer, as they call it in the Americans. <laughs> yeah, and, and apologies to anybody and everyone who just got offended by my comments there. I make these based purely on what I've been told, having never actually been to Liverpool since I was four, <laughs> or been to Manchester since I was ten, and went to the Science Museum and had great fun playing on the invisible piano. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So, For your information, the MBS show is impartial when it comes to football. Yes, Indeed. okay. will be very glad if he didn't throw pointy things at it for the stupid <laughs> comments. He may come thick and fast as the show goes on. I mean, it's it's true. I mean, it's either nobody bothers about you or everybody's throwing pointy things at you. Mm, throw things, just not the pointy kind. Oh, money, true. throw money. Clashies. You know what? Throw money, but throw coins. Hey, coins hurt. <laughs> That's a point. That's a point. Yeah, at least you can pick them up and run away afterwards. Oh, boy. That's <laughs> true. Kind of it's very true. Recompense for that. It may hurt, but you've got the coins afterwards. Yeah, that's a good thing. Would you rather receive $10 or have $100 fired at you in coins? Oh, that, that's going to kill, man. That's going to kill. Yeah, that, that one might be a bit much. They're going, yeah, have this. Boom. Headshot. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway. They changed a lot of video games if they replaced bullets with coins. I remember some game did that. I forgot which <laughs> one. Yeah, you can put cash in a gun or something, right? Yeah, I forgot. But anyway, um, moving on to the <laughs> next topic is housekeeping. And in, well, I'm... Um, it's going to be a repeat of last week's housekeeping, but this is really important. Uh, we here at NBS Show love playing video games, and we... Very would... important, we love video games. Yeah, true, true. Um, we love playing video games, mm-hmm. and we would really like to help in a charity event. So, how could we do so? That's even more important. Indeed. Well, as of November 2nd, most of the NBS Show crew will be participating in Extra Life 2013, a 25-hour gaming marathon to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. So what do you expect during this 25 hours gaming marathon? Yep, as you can see, most of us are pretty lifeless when it comes to these things. But we'll expect to be a part of the live stream with Norman. And you can even join him in a game. He doesn't bite, don't worry. He says he does, but don't listen to him. And possibly see him rage at a game. Yeah, you've never seen him rage before this is the time. You interact with guests during the live stream and get your questions answered. Yep, he may be a guy, but he can multitask pretty well. <laughs> so we'll really appreciate if you could donate to our team. And together we can help kids and kicks cancers butt. Links to donate. You can find the link to donate to Norman's cause, Charlie's cause, or directly through the MBS shows page. All three are in the show notes. Now you notice you won't find mine there because hey, I got Saturday classes. I'm sorry, I can't be a part of this. Uh, that's cool. You could still be on our live stream and answer questions. <laughs> that's true. Indeed. So Unless I'll be out playing something in the park, you know. <laughs> so anyway. a ball around or playing football, <laughs> soccer. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Um, please do, guys, because this is really important to us. This is our first year participating in Extra Life. And, hey, you get to see us playing video games. And maybe I'll invite some of the people uh, from the past show to be on and stuff, maybe. like. Uh, and, and take it from me. Norman playing video games, that is entertainment. <laughs> no. You you, commentary, uh, you commentating is going to be more fun. Uh, I, yeah, maybe if I'm around, I'll try and do that. But when I saw you playing video games, it's like... Uh, no, what do I do? What do I do? What was I doing? I don't remember. Team Fortress 2. Oh, that. Oh, okay. The robots are coming. What do I do? What do I do? Shoot them. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Well, uh, I seem to forget that one. But anyway, Scribble, if you do have the time on November 2nd, please join us on a stream mm. just to say hello and stuff. We won't keep you long unless you want to join us for that 25 hours of gaming marathon. <laughs> Given that my last game experience was uh, Crisis Core, I think I'm a bit out of practice. Uh, we'll play Pong. Yeah. We'll try and play Pong. I'm not that far back. <laughs> it's only 2008. I know. Yeah. Crisis Core was a nice game. Crisis Core was a nice game. Yeah, it is good. But I, I played it entirely because I was an old school Final Fantasy fan who loved Zack. So, hey, yes, this game was made for me. Uh, most of the Final Fantasy VII games were made for the fans. <laughs> I'm still... <laughs> Not for fans and for who? You know, money. <laughs> <laughs> for fans, money, yes. You're I'm, I'm still want money from fans. I'm still waiting for that HD remake for seven. Uh, I keep waiting for that one. I think every single report I ever hear about that goes. We're thinking about oh. they'd rather keep making shows, but rather keep making games about characters nobody likes. <laughs> yeah. At least they're making games and character and shows and remakes and HDs of stuff. You know, unlike some company that's making music videos. <laughs> oh. Oh, we will not be touching about that one but maybe if then you want to talk about it later we can talk about it later I don't want to talk about it I want to rage about it but yeah let's continue anyway let's move on to the next topic and the next topic is news time in today's news time Japanese Pony Swag if you're tired of the current My Little Pony merchandise you have at your local store and you want something new for a change why not look over at Japan and see what they have to offer I'm tired of seeing empty shelves at my local store that is good, I think. Anyway, um, Japan has recently launched an official My Little Pony online store where you can get various items from brushables, keychains, Tumblr, not that website, the drink holder thingy, <laughs> and even t-shirts, to name a few. Links can be found in the show notes. So guys, Pony Swag Toy from Japan. Wow, that's interesting. I've seen some of their shirts and they're really cool. Do what? I, I love those shirts. But they're for girls. I don't care. <laughs> Oh my, but anyway, Scribbler, have you seen it? I haven't seen it, no. Um, I don't tend to have a lot of all the pony clothes and, and things. The reason I said before that I don't tend to advertise in real life that, um, that I like ponies. Uh, they have the keychains, they have the keychains. And oh, um, if anyone out there is interested in getting pony stuff from Japan and they don't have a friend from Japan, you could contact Osaka Jack. So anyway, that was Pony Toys from Japan, and you know then those shirts are meant for girls. Anyway, moving on. Alonze, to the next one. Charlie, why don't you take this one? All right, I'll go to the next news topic. In the next news topic, we have the glow-in-the-dark doctor. Always wanted one of those glow-in-the-dark doctor who's my new pony? Well, if they're that specific, we have the star for you. Thinggeek.com has an exclusive glow-in-the-dark Doctor Who's vinyl figure for sale at their store. The figure looks identical to the one that was produced by Funko. Hmm, interesting. And it's priced at $14.99 USD. Links can be found in the show notes. What do you think of this variant of Funko model, Norman? I got no idea because um, it's not crystal, it's glow-in-the-dark. So I think I'm okay with it. <laughs> I think it's something like an exclusive. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think Funko has been throwing out exclusives left, right and centre and this is just another one of them. True, true. But still, it would be good for someone who has not yet have them? Mm, I would think it's very specific towards collectors. I mean, if you really have got a normal looking one, maybe only those diehard collectors would like these uh, variants. Mm. Something like comic book covers. True, true. But anyway, Scribbler, would you be interested in getting it? The Doctor Who's glow in the dark. Glow in the dark. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm acting there. Um, I don't know, actually. For me, it would be a case of I would like it, but for the amount of space. Mm. I live in a place as big as a postage stamp. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and it's already pretty crammed with stuff. My comic collection and my book collection takes up three walls. Oh, I my. I need to pick up the last one. <laughs> I feel yeah, I feel yeah. I have the same problem actually. Ever since I started collecting these toy thingies, um, I've been running out of space to be honest. Because mm, you want to put them in places where you can actually see them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. My my book collection is ridiculous. Oh, oh, I'm, God. I'm sure it's my like comics and manga things just take over the room. So while I would love to have a glow in the dark Doctor Who, he would have to go in a place where it wouldn't matter if he glow in the dark because I couldn't see him. <laughs> oh my goodness. And on to the next news. Blind bag cheat book. Have you ever wondered what you will get in your blind bag purchase or just want to know what pony is in what blind bag series? 
Well, now you can with this handy dandy app. A user on DeviantArt by the name of Jerry411 has made a Flash app that labels every Pony Blindback series and all of its content code. For now, the app only works with any Flash enabled devices. Links can be found in the show notes. So, this is cool. Mm, actually, yes, it is, but it's not something new. If you look at it carefully, the Flash app is actually based on uh, already a, a pre existing guide available on the internet. Yeah, uh, true. On Strawberry Leaf. Yeah, true, but that you need to look at it and it's not easy accessible. This, you just click on a blind bag, it opens up, you can scroll which one. It, it, it's streamlined, it's streamlined. Yeah, it's more streamlined, definitely, but at the, as of right now, it's not yet compatible with the um, iOS device. It, it, but it uh, does. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Um, Notice when I say work with any flash-enabled devices, <laughs> that's very specific there. Yeah, right. No, that's the thing. Yeah. No, but seriously, um, the guy here, from what I understand, he made an app. Well, he didn't make. He found an application that can work flash on your Android. So, ah, that's cool. Yeah, so far it's workable. Um, can't wait to see it flourish up to its full capacity. Mm, true. But Scribbler, do you have any Android devices or do you buy the blind bags? I live in a part of the UK where the blind bags are not really sold. I got my local supermarket was had some in and they didn't sell very well. So really? they they reduced them all and, and got rid of them and I got the last one off the shelf which thankfully had a little big Mac inside and it oh. exactly went there. Yay. Um but they don't sell them where I live. I would have to tra- travel dozens and dozens of miles to try and find one. Oh. Which no, I'm going to happen, I'm afraid. Oh, that's not fun. Huh? Well, at no, least... That's not fun. Well, then you know again, what... premium space again. So my mini little big Macintosh sits me with me when I'm recording and, and glares at me and judges me and tells me when I've done stuff wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he says, that take was awful. Do it again. No, no, that, that's too long. He, he would look <laughs> at you and just say, nope. Nope. <laughs> well, you know what that means. Road trip. <laughs> You've given me a very good idea. Maybe next time I should just put one of those figures next to me and let, let that figure judge me throughout the whole of the recording. I think it helps. <laughs> it does. Mm. It just looks at you and you can turn guys. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And moving on to the next topic, guest time. In today's guest time, we have Scribbler, the Hi. VA voice, act, voice actor VA or the same thing. Um, fanfic reader or... You do stuff on the line that involves fanfic. So how are you yeah. doing, Scribbler? How are you doing? Scribbler, the fanfic thingy. <laughs> yes, indeed. Fanfic uh, specialist. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that sounds good, actually. That makes me sound really impressive. Yes. So how are you doing? And are you having fun yet? Yes. I've had more laughs now than I've had all day. Awesome, awesome. So anyway, uh, before we... I have s- a sinking feeling I'm guilty for that. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> So, before we go into the interview, mind telling who you are and what you do to the people who might not know who you are? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Scribbler. Uh, I'm known online somewhere in some places as Obab Scribbler, but I am just Scribbler. Obab is an old reference to a fan fiction I wrote because I started out writing fan fictions um, and moved over to reading them when I entered My Little Pony fandom and I've discovered do, uh, dramatic readings. Although, weirdly, the first dramatic reading I encountered was not actually from Ponies. It was from Final Fantasy VII. Oh, my. And I migrated over. Yeah, it was a, a charity event. Somebody had um, bought a fan fiction reading from someone and provided them with a really, really sweet little console fic. Um, and that's how I got into it. Oh. So, yeah, so now I, I read fan fictions. I do comic dubs. So I got into that one recently as well. I think that's how most people seem to know me is through the core of the Apple series, which is a comic series by Nate Rand. Uh, that I've started dubbing that people seem to really like. Yeah, um, yeah and, and I'm moving into radio play territory now that I'm writing and uh, recording a radio play with my my very lovely cast who, yeah, I was not going to say the word to describe them, but very lovely and, and a bit strange in ways, but in a lovely way. Are they plotting to take you down because with your um, soul-stealing, voice-stealing powers? <laughs> Yes, they have accused me of stealing their souls upon occasion. I don't steal the souls, I just own them. (laughs) Next time we call her, she'll be speaking in Norman's voice. Oh my. (laughs) Hello, Scribble. Hello and welcome to the MBS show. Uh, Ay, ay, (laughs) ay. No, 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 no. But anyway, um, thanks for being on our show, our humble little show. Um, Our our subscriber counts are not that high, but still, 
We, we, hmm. we try, we try. So, Scribbler, you said that I uh, started reading or started doing audio reading was at Final Fantasy um, Final Fantasy 7, was it? Uh, I first discovered that fan fiction readings existed through Final Fantasy 7 mm. when I listened to one. Um, and I found that it was called the Podpick Exchange it's quite a few years ago now. Um, and I downloaded a load from that, including a Basil the Mad Great Mass Detective fan fiction result. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever heard of fan fiction even existing for that, and it was a podfic. And I just discovered on YouTube people doing um, fan fiction readings uh, late last year. Actually, it was about this time last year I discovered them on YouTube and just went, ooh, and started listening to that. I was listening to uh, Bossy Twinio's uh, version of Past Sins, and I just thought, I'd really like to do something like this. Mm. So I investigated, bought a microphone, started the Christmas, and here I am. Oh, okay. So, what was your first reading? <laughs> My first reading was a, a vinyl Octavia thick by John Dorr uh, called Octavia Sonata. And yeah, I cheated a bit because I can pretty tell from my accent that I'm British. <laughs> so, I chose an Octavia thinking, I'll start with one where I can actually do the voice. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah it, it works that way. Start with something you know and then move on to something you don't. Actually, now there's a strange yeah. resemblance. Did you by any chance voice the, the promo that Buck did? Which Buck? The Brony Which, UK um, convention. The, the recent one where they highlighted all the conventions in Europe. Quite possibly, no, that was um, uh, Isla Monte. The, really? Where, yeah. Isla Monte can do that voice? Oh my god. Really? I thought it was somebody else yeah. because... Um, are we talking no, about I, Britannia, right? Yeah, Lady Britannia. Yeah, Lady Britannia. I, yes, I thought it was... Monte, yes, oh! oh. Yes. I thought it was somebody else. Or was it... No, no, uh, it's listed in the credits of the, of the advert that they put out. But it's her. Oh, oh, okay. I, however, am the voice of Sonic Radio Boom's... Um, mascot uh, called Sonia. I'm the voice of her. Uh, so, Sonia? unless you've heard her. <laughs> this is the mascot of what again? Sorry? Sonic Radio Boom, which is the British arm of Honeyville Live, the radio station. Ah, okay. Mm. And I uh, just their mascot. <laughs> British <Jeff>. arm. <laughs> Imagine a giant octopus and each one talks with an, if each one talks, but each one talks with a different accent. You have a British, you have a Northern, you have a Southern, you have an Irish, you have a Scotsman. You need to add the Asian. <laughs> No, there's no you such thing as the Asian. There's no such thing as a British Asian. <laughs> there's plenty of things in British. There's chocolate there. There's chicken hall fun in Britain. Okay. Yeah, but they don't have the accent. They don't have it down. <laughs> but anyway, um, then who still talk like Daniel? How are you? <laughs> uh, I, I've, I have a feeling that we're insulting a whole bunch of people now. <laughs> I'll just add to the, all the ones I didn't insult earlier. You now get to have a crack at them. We'll see how many people we can insult at the end of the show. If oh we're my. really, really good, we'll get them all. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. No, but um, I, I'm looking here and I have to say that fanfic reading and recording it is a dying art because during the first generation of the Brony fandom, it was really prevalent and popular. Um, Mike the Microphone did some, and um, I, from what I've seen, he's not doing it much anymore. No, not by the looks of things. Although, he, um, I don't know, I wasn't in the, sort of the first flush of fandom. I was still over in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! and Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts at that point. I think when when Bronydom first took off, I was well deep into uh, Kingdom Hearts fanfiction mm. that, that goes for 102 chapters. So that one kind of occupied my brain. And I missed... The whole first wave of my little ponies. I was very upset thinking, hang on, I've been a pony fan longer than any of you, and I missed it. <laughs> how did that happen? No, I know how that feels. Square <laughs> Enix boarded you, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were distracted by Square Enix. I think you got absorbed in the world of literature. And I, I do notice something with your readings. It's highly produced. Not like mm. some of what Mike the Microphone have done or others like him have done. Um, yeah, they're not great readings for the most part. They do have music and sound effects and things added. Mm. Um, that, a lot of that is, well, it's for two, three different reasons. One is that um, I'm a big, big fan of radio plays. I grew up listening to them. Um, I mean, my favourite thing to listen to is still Sherlock Holmes versus Dracula, the old uh, uh -huh. radio play. Yes, it is magnificent. I think it's somewhere on YouTube if people want to listen to it. It's a play from the late 80s, and it's just so well produced that I would lose myself in that as a kid, and I would lose myself in the afternoon play on Radio 4. And I also, a few years ago, I was listening to, um, when I was on holiday, I cycle on holidays, and I cycle across um, Belgium and Holland, and it's been great because it's flat. Oh. Um, yeah, it's, I, I rent a bike while I'm over there for two weeks and just go cycle, cycle, cycle with my headphones in. I'm and, um, bored if I do that in the car. 
<laughs> in a car, yes, it is. It's quite tedious, but on a bike, it's great because you're sort of avoiding things and not falling off. You mean um, a motorcycle or a bicycle? No, no, an actual bicycle. Pedal, pedal. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty much the only exercise I do. <laughs> um, I do kickboxing and things when I'm at work, but they have an exercise class, but apart from that, yeah, cycling. Hold on for a second, what do you mean by you do kickboxing at work? <laughs> well, the work does actually offer a class, that's the thing. Oh, that's not like a job or something like that. <laughs> I it's kick. Not middle work. Right, everybody start kicking. No. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's an after thing, after hours thing. It's like security mm. guard or something like that. <laughs> Actually, I do have a question regarding radio plays because it's not something that we commonly see around these regions. Um, I, I, in Asia, there's hardly any, I think. Oh, and wait, I, sorry, before, it, before yes. you continue on. You heard Tio Tio uh, Opera? No, no. Uh, Give me a second. Before you move on, mm. back in the days, mm. radio plays were really awesome before the internet. Yes. Before the internet. Mm. Ah. I'm younger than you and I the, know that. The first time I've heard of these radio plays is, funnily enough, through the Brony fandom. In fact, it was the Doctor Who's crossover with um, um, My Little Pony. Uh, Doctor Who's radio play. That was the first time I've heard of it. Mm, interesting. Mm-hmm. There's some really brilliant ones out there, and most, most of them are actually produced by the BBC, but mm. because I'm yeah. writing Ready Player the moment, it's heavily influenced by BBC radio plays, but if you want to try them out, the best ones to try are probably Cabin Pressure, Old Harry's Name, and Elden Quest, which are all hilarious and so well-produced. And, and that's one of the things that I wanted to do with my fan fiction readings was to sort of emulate them. Oh, I hear somebody typing. Is somebody yeah, typing exactly. It's like, it's like <laughs> I've got to check this out right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, sorry, I'm just taking notes here. <laughs> on on um, YouTube, try them out. They are fantastic as well. That's my favorite. The only but one yeah. that we know about, because I study communication, the one that keeps getting shoved down our throats is the War of the Worlds because that's the one that caused the big stir. The original one or the rock opera version? The, the original one because that's the one that people heard on the radio and they thought, oh crap, aliens are here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Public, oh my god, there's aliens! Well, they, they did a good job. They, they did a good job. No, it but, wasn't really yeah. that. It was, they said it was because back then the radios all told the truth because they read nothing but news. <laughs> Suddenly this guy decided to try something funny. <laughs> Well, they, they did do radio plays, these, so they had lots and lots of Sherlock Holmes plays. So there's loads of them, and they had something called, um, oh, what was it called? It was a, a very famous science fiction show that went out every week, the science fiction um, plays. And there was another one, there's a horror show that went out every week in the 40s and 50s. Because um, I have these old recordings, and I have a proper sad sack, I reflected all these. But they had things like Vincent Price was on their radio several different times with radio plays. So people who heard that War of the Worlds broadcast and thought aliens were not... They were just a bit thick. <laughs> mm. I, did, I, I mean, who? I don't know. I don't know if it was just an instance of the time of the paranoia of the era and, and how easily people were told and how... You know, they were genuinely innocent, but quite frankly, just pretty stupidly gullible. It was the whole hypodermic needle theory thing. <laughs> no, but still, um, um, getting back to what you've done with your work, the first um, fake reading I heard was Flying Lessons, and you did a good job. And the soundtrack and the accent you did, well, let's just say you didn't do a British accent. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll try and do as, as close to the character voice as, as I can. Actually, I have to say, since I've done that one, I've got a lot better at playing the characters that. When I first started out, it was really obvious that I was British. I mean, really, really obvious. And I'm kind of hoping that now I've improved a bit with intonations and things. Now, see, this is something I really can't understand. You know, I, British people can actually turn off their accents, right? Mm, most of us can. Depends on how thick the accent is. Yeah. Yeah. The trouble is when Malaysians go over there and they come back, they start pe- speaking like this, and it's very hard to understand why a Chinese guy is speaking like this. <laughs> Dude, you're Chinese. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how many accents there are in Britain, actually. I, one of the things that I love is um, studying accents, seeing if I can imitate them. I've done that basically all my life, is just picking up accents. It's weird, when I've been watching comedians, especially Billy Connolly, I, I tend to blitz through my DVDs, and if I've watched a lot of Billy Connolly, I don't realise I've started to speak in a Scottish accent. <laughs> so people look at me and go, what are you doing? I didn't know. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> it's just not re-enunciating. That's really yeah, it's, yeah, it's, just, it's emotion, isn't it? You just pick up what you hear a lot. 
True. Like when um, I hang out with my Indian friends, yeah, in the end, I start talking like how they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this all reminds me of... What? Have any of you played this really old video game called World's World Party? I know Charlie has. No, I, I don't think so, I have. I have, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was actually rated by PC Gamer as one of the five worst games in the world because you can choose the voice packs for your team and they're all in accents. <laughs> yeah. There was yeah. the Indian team, there was the British, there were the Scots, there were the Americans, the Japanese. Yeah. Teams. I can imagine that one getting people backed up. Yeah, it was because you have one team, bang, you are shooting badly. <laughs> <laughs> Go fly me, mate. Oh, oh my. God. That's like having the, the GPS in active with different voices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a tom-tom in my car because I, I can't find my way out of a paper bag. I'm actually a legendary about how much I can get lost. Oh, so I cannot yeah. see a map to save my life. I have been in tears on a country road, ringing home and going, I have <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, Oh, goodness. I'm like 10 feet away from my destination and I just couldn't, couldn't do it. So GPS <laughs> is my best friend. And that's so possible. Yeah. I've been there all the time. <laughs> oh, I've been there with you. I've been there with you, Dan. I've been there with you. I know. <laughs> you know that pain of, oh, God, where am I? I'm going to have to tell someone I'm lost. Yeah. In <laughs> a normal fashion way. Norman knows the pain because he can see it in my face. <laughs> I was with you. I was with you when we got lost. <laughs> and, and, yeah, just for your information, I, I'm sure all our listeners also know that Norman and Charlie and I, well, Charlie and I live in Salango area, but... Norman and the two of us were 300 kilometers apart, so <laughs> navigating that was a little tricky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can go 300 kilometers in the wrong direction and be like, oops. We <laughs> <laughs> right, were supposed to turn yes. left. <laughs> turn left, keep going. How did you get those two instructions wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I saw the ocean and I thought this, this thing's broken. <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> ocean. Sure, that wasn't on the way. But, yeah, just back to the accent thing, my friend has a really cheap um, GPS that he got it years and years ago when it was like a new thing, and it had an accent in it, and it was this really harsh um, accent, um, it was a, a harsh southern accent, so it was like uh, Cockney Londonish, <laughs> <laughs> and he said he was listening to it, and he said, it's, it's really odd. Because when you're, you're driving along and this thing's just says, turn left, turn left. <laughs> like, there's actually, I think, yeah, Dara Brain, the um, comedian, I think he's probably got the same one. Because I've heard this thing and it is harsh. <laughs> mine's, mine's this lovely lady who goes, after 400 yards, turn left. And this one's just going, turn left. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you know, Scribbler, uh, you have a tonton, right? Yeah, you, you should add ponies to it. <laughs> yeah, I have a Trixie. Trixie says you should turn left. <laughs> oh, that's going to be so cool. Yeah. They're slowly release, uh, releasing pony types. I can types. imagine if there's like somebody who does their own recordings of an angry Irishman going, Boy, <laughs> make a bloody left! <laughs> Uh, no, but but back to what you do because I'm 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 looking here yeah. and something caught my eye. Um, MLP fan fiction review white box by chromosome. Yeah. He was a guest. <laughs> was he? Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I don't tend to upload, up, um, upload many of those simply because I get really really involved in writing fan fiction reviews. If anybody who's heard either of those two, they know how much I waffle. Um, and I get quite met- I got my quite metaphysical about the nature of fiction in that one, and um, whether fan fiction alone can stand in a world of visual media. It's yeah, it sounds really pretentious. Probably it was, but I got really into it all the time. Yeah, but I don't good. produce many of those just because it takes so long to make each one. When I read a fan fiction and produce it and things, uh, each one of my fan fiction readings, depending on how long they are, can take anything from six to 18 to even 28 hours to make one depending on how long they are oh my goodness yeah the really young ones like um, A Silent House and Treating Her Right they took about 28 hours each all time not all all together but over over a few weeks they took a long time to do because they're each an hour and a half long whereas a 10 minute one well a a short one that's like 10-15 minutes can take me two hours after having read it Actually, I'm interested to know uh, what what's the process like for you to pick the genre, uh, pick your fan fiction for reviews or for dubbing. For the actual readings, mm. um, basically, I just pick the ones that I would want to hear, or alternatively, the ones that I've got voices in that I like acting. Tends to there's quite a few bomb bomb ones coming up. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I, there's a, 
a fan fiction I recorded recently called um, Twilight Sparkle versus Bridal Zilla. Which is, <laughs> I don't know how famous the fan fiction itself is, but I loved acting that one because it's Bon Bon in a snit on her wedding day going crackers. And it was so much fun to act. Oh, I, I can't wait to listen to it. It sounds like, it sounds like Bon Bon being doubly grumpy than usual or something. Or... She, she goes insane in this thing. I mean, it's properly, oh my god. But even as I'm reading it, I'm thinking, what? There's a lot of people <laughs> with reading things. Because I put out so much content, a lot of the stuff that I do is called readings that I haven't read them beforehand. So I'll, so what you hear is me, I, I'm reading it along with the person who's listening to it. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a blind reading. We call yeah. it a blind reading, yeah. Cold uh, is also so, well, Most of mine are cold and blind readings. Um, hence, when I'm recording, I will record each scene individually. And if I make mistakes, I'll pause for a bit and then move on and do the line again. And in post-production, I will then go back and edit out the stuff. That is exactly um, how I do my podcast. <laughs> I made a mistake. Just, never mind, move on. Yes, I hit so pause, because Norman here just lets the recording run, and then he spends the next, how what, 48 hours editing the show? 12. It, it's gone down to 12 now. <laughs> oh, improvement, so yeah. Uh, Scribble, I've noticed you've covered lots and lots of fan, fan fictions of multiple genres, including dark, romance, sad fics. Is there any particular uh, genre which you enjoy more than others, or any particular genre you enjoy least? Um, there's one I will never read, and that's plot fix. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, good. that predominantly because, as anybody who's heard my reading knows, I don't just read them, I act them. Uh. And I could not act a sex scene without laughing. <laughs> I <couldn't>. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough when I've got um, some of the ones that sail a bit close to the wind, and after I've turned the, micro- the microphone off, I just, I am in tears laughing at how <laughs> ridiculous I sounded to myself. I <laughs> I am not remotely sexy when I read these things. I go... <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. She, That's interesting. She, even some of the, the narrative does she run her hood to her. Oh, I'm going to have to record this again. <laughs> okay, how about the ones that you enjoy more? I, I enjoy reading the comedy ones, but probably I enjoy making the sad bits most because they seem to get uh, the most positive reactions to them. Mm. I, I'm pretty easy about what I record. I mean, I like to do a, a mixture of genres so I don't get pigeonholed. I did my first Grimdark recently, and that was The Cough. The Cough, right. That, that particular yeah. one. I, I have read that particular. It's a very short fic and um, short but powerful. It, <laughs> yeah, oh. I heard Mike Microphone's reading of it, and I have a rule that unless I know about another version of it, I don't like doing fan fictions that have already been done because I don't want to reinvent the wheel. It has happened by accident. <laughs> Asian, where I've read one and then found it afterwards and then go, oh, damn it. Um, like, there's one that's in post-production at the moment. I'm just waiting for a couple of my of my radio play to get back to the production lines called I Love Princess Luna. Oh. And I discovered somebody had done it after I was halfway through um, oh. editing it. So, um, what? No. Yeah, that's the worst time to find out. Yeah. Well, you've already done all the hard work and you've managed to rope three different people in to do it with you. Yes, yeah, that's a bad time to find out it's already been done. So, so I've broken the floor by accident on occasion, but the cough was the first time I've knowingly done a fic that had already been done. And that's one of the reasons that it, it was my first foray into Grim Dark, and it was sort of, oh, it was kind of to placate people who wanted to do cupcakes, which I'm also no. not going to do. Cupcakes, there are just way too many. I think it's overdone already at this point. It, it is also, it's overdone. Also, when I'm reading something, I, mean, I, I have a yardstick of spelling, punctuation, and grammar that I kind of have to have oh. before I start go, before my brain starts to hurt as I'm reading, and Cupcakes doesn't have it. <laughs> it's just, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Thank you for this, but is it a stereotype that Europeans are grammar Nazis? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I don't know about anybody else. Most people are not. <laughs> All my friends who went to Europe, they came back, and then I talked to them, and then like, Daniel, your grammar is wrong. You got the message, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> most, I think they probably picked it up from really nice people, because most people like encounter couldn't give a monkeys about spelling bunch of grammar. They look at me strangely when I start doing this. I have been the person who has taken a marker pen to a sign. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was on the... It was, <laughs> It was the inside of a toilet door and somebody had written an, a sign um, saying, you know, don't put these things here, put all the stuff in the toilet, don't um, throw tissues to the ceiling. And they spelled it all wrong. And I had a pen in my bag and I was in a bad mood that day. So I edited the sign and then I left. 
And then I found on the notice board the next morning a, a snitty note saying, can people please not edit the signs in the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Funny enough, it, it did come back and it was corrected after that. Somebody got on the computer and changed it. Yeah, then you should go back there with a pen and write, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been epic if I'd done that. Okay, I, I, I would like Ninja to... Ninja drama. <laughs> I would like to make a... Uh, just tonight, a... she adds apostrophes and then she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Norman once recommended a fix something about grammar and stuff. Uh, What's it called again, Norman? Give me... The importance of spelling in ponies or something. No, 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 it's not that. Um, um, it's there, there, there. Oh, right. There, there. My brain is already hurting, so please. No. Th- that I'm not started... that one. I know of two others, but not that one. That started out as a comedy fic, but it ended up becoming a six-chapter um, adventure fic. <laughs> Which is pretty cool, but um, you, you could read the first chapter without um, moving on to the next one. But hey, just fun, maybe? I don't know. Talking about readings and stuff, the second one I listened to was, Oh my, did I misread the signs? <laughs> that one was funny. That, that one was, uh, when I heard it, it was, oh my, this is good. You got the intonation of the characters right, the accents, and well, I, I felt yeah. it. I felt it. That was one of the first times I was actually happy with my Fluttershy voice. And that was actually a request by, um, it was all payment <laughs> for some artwork um, by one of the artist teams on the radio play Heroic Tale. And he asked me to do that in in lieu of paying him. So I thought, well, I'll do that one then. And as it is, I improved greatly doing that because I had to do Fluttershy's voice a lot. And I'm not usually very good at her voice, but it just seemed to click in that one. It sounds good. It sounded good. And Fluttershy is my favourite character, so yay! Yay! <laughs> yay! <laughs> oh, so good. It's, it's just I enjoyed listening to that. And, uh, oh, <laughs> can, 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 can we get a voice sample from you? Maybe a Fluttershy um, line? We can do. What do you want me to say? Um, anyone of those. Sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> just something, just something, some, just something you think Fluttershy would say. Oh my, uh, it's okay with you. Uh, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> awesome! That is awesome. Yeah, it was. It was just the right amount of uh, this because I've heard bad Fluttershy's. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Seriously, I think hmm, maybe you can consider doing this professionally or something. <laughs> I am complete 100% amateur in this. Like I said, I've managed to improve the last few months from having done it, but when I started, I was sort of shocked. It was awful. <laughs> there was a reason I chose Octavia to begin with. I was cheating like crazy. No, but um, how yeah, if people works. if people want to request uh, you to read a fic, how, what do they do? Like, do you have a um, request process or what, they need, what do they need to do? Well, I take suggestions more than requests because I can't promise that I will do the fic. So suggestions... If I like them, we'll go on my potential podfic list, which I will just to open another window. Mm. Uh, my potential podfic list at this moment is 79 pages long in Word. Uh, yeah, whoa. and it's, it's quite long. Yeah, however, the first nine pages, nine, ten pages are ones that I've already done. You should but, put it in um, Notepad, that is one page. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so, but yeah, if you want to suggest stuff, I'm, I tend to only take suggestions for one shots because uh. of how and when I record things. It tends to be that multi chapters don't work with my schedule because mm. I will either lose interest in a project or I can't promise to to the whole quality to the same all the way through because I will get bored. Uh. So um, one shots tend to be ones that I do more often because I can really throw myself into a project. The moment it's uploaded, I am literally while things are uploading to YouTube, I'm looking at the next thing I can do. <laughs> like a butterfly that way that I need to keep active with what I'm doing. Uh. Is it busy? And I can't really do that with multi chapters. Oh, okay, understandable. The chapter two coming sometime, sometime. soon. And then, yeah, one of the major things, like, there's four things I always, always get asked for. And that's Core of the Apple Part 4, which mm-hmm. hasn't been made yet. So <laughs> yes. it's, simple. it's not there yet. I will dub it as soon as it arrives. But until that then, I have not put magical time traveling spell. That's Twilight. They don't exist. They do little- <laughs> Just for four seconds. But the other one being Background Pony, that I started reading that at the beginning of my fanfic media career. And I had everything ready to go with the next chapter, and then my laptop died and took my heart. Oh, one of the worst things I ever. Hours, 
hours of recording. Just Curious like, question. Do you Were you using awesome. Audacity? Yes, I do. Uh, oh, yes. We all know the pain of the Audacity crash. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, he, he, I mean, my whole laptop died. I, I had to buy a new one. Uh, um, I managed, out of 300, 340 gigabytes of stuff, gigabytes, megabytes, um, they managed to save 10. Oh. And it, oh, wow. and it was legal documents and things that I said, yeah, they have to. If you're going to save anything before the whole thing dies, get them. And unfortunately, it, the fandom stuff went, which is why there was a large period of time where I didn't upload anything for a while because it was all gone, including the next three chapters of Background Pony. I was so disheartened by that that I just couldn't face recording them all over again because a lot of it was rarity. <laughs> and I love rarity of intonation, but it's hard, really hard to get it right because Tabitha St. Germain is such an amazing actress that it, trying to do an impression of her hurts, physically hurts. True. I'm actually bald-headed, I mean, Yes, I must admit. Um, over the last couple of uploads, I've said, so I've done lots of Rainbow Dash readings. I've wrecked my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Rainbow Dash. I always thought... You'll have pain. Whenever I've done a Rainbow Dash reading, you have to imagine that I've, as I've done this, there's been portions in between where I've had to go off and cough or go off and have a drink thinking, oh my god, my throat feels like sandpaper. <laughs> well, one, one thing that I, I think we forgot to mention is that you voice all of the characters, right? All of them being six, right? Unless I've uh, said otherwise, like in um, Five Things that, ne- that Never Happened to Twilight Sparkle, where I am Shadow 007, uh, voice Rarity and Twilight. But yeah, apart from that, I pretty much voice everybody. Mm. And, Apart um, from the male characters again, I get I like collaborating with people lately. Yeah, I've tend to do male characters because my voice is quite high pitched. It's really hard for me to do each characters. Mm, but yeah, well, um, here's a suggestion for you. And uh, is a one fic eight eight thousand five hundred words long. So and it's really good. I this is the fic that I would recommend anyone doing. Uh, anybody starting when reading fanfic. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. sunny skies all day long. Yep, it is a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, that one. Um, I think it's called Green Lit Sky. I listened to his version of that while I was in Wales last weekend. I was hill walking with my dog. Um, I say hill walking. She was hill walking. I was hill dying and crawling. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to that as I was going. Good plod, plod, plod over a mountain. <laughs> listening to Celestia trying to be sunny skies. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a really good one to start off with. It's anybody to have a go at fan fiction reading. I mean, there's a couple of things that really annoy me in other people's readings, but one of the reasons I started doing things the way that I do now is because it peed me off so much the way that I didn't like the way other people were doing it. So there's certain things that I won't do or that I, or that I insist on in my readings. Um, and th- there are things like, I hate it, hate it, hate it when people put a huge amount of talking at the start, and I used to do that, and somebody mentioned it, and I thought, yeah, actually, it's quite annoying. But when you click you for like a fan reading... Talking? Yeah, and if you're going to do that, fine. But put it at the end so that people mm. can listen or not as they choose, not have to wade through it to get at the fix they clicked on in the first oh. place. I always thought those kind of things were introduction, um, telling the folks what's going on, and then like, okay, let's start. It, it kind of is when Gee, they do Norman, it like that. it sounds familiar, doesn't it? What? <laughs> <laughs> when it's to do with the fiction, I can understand it. It's when people just start waffling about things that aren't anything relevant. They're going, yeah, uh, okay. When does the fan fiction start? I've been listening for five minutes now. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, irrelevant stuff. Oh, yeah, that, I understand. Yeah. So I, that's I'm, I'm going to buy a new microphone next week. <laughs> <laughs> Support me on my Indiegogo page. Then <laughs> uh, you're insulting the whole of Britain right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I said we're trying to aim to get everybody. We need to <laughs> skew them all off by the end. <laughs> yeah, like, I subconsciously did that accent. <laughs> Uh, seriously, I didn't think about it. Mm, my yeah. goodness. Uh, I'm corrupting you all by this. Uh, all I have to say, if I if I stop this recording of my front door and there's a mob with pitchforks, I'm blaming you. <laughs> oh, is that out yet? Is that out yet? Maybe, maybe next week. <laughs> but no, um... Yeah. I mean, I would love to see a pitchfork. I've never seen one before. We don't have any of those down here. No, you haven't been to a farm. That's why, Dan. Well, I've been to a farm. No, no. Mechanical equipment uh, and stuff, you know. 21st century stuff. the road from a farm. I literally, like, you drive down my hill and I hit uh, open countryside and open fields and there's a farm and a sewage plant not too far from where I live. You can never tell exactly where the smell's coming from where I live. <laughs> um, my goodness. But it's, but it, it's brilliant. It certainly was well, brilliant until it's time to make the animals cross the road and it's <laughs> annoying. Okay. It's been half an hour there going, walk faster! No. Half an hour! <laughs> Good lord, yeah. I thought the 
the traffic jams here were bad. <laughs> oh, uh, Scribble, I would like to, like to make a comment on your uh, YouTube channel. I've noticed that you actually have a very well-balanced uh, channel in that sense that you actually have long fix for people to listen, shorter comic ducks for those with very low attention span. Mm -hmm. That's actually very good coverage um, so that even people who are like, they, they, they don't read fanfics, they can still enjoy the comic dubs and stuff. So that's pretty good. Yeah, and I very try good. to sort of cater to all tastes. Again, it's, it's stuff that I wanted to see when I first got into uh, the Mount Emma fandom. So I don't always find what I want, so I'll make it instead. <laughs> mm, if you don't yeah. like something, change it or do it yourself. Indeed, yes. that sounds like a plan. <laughs> I for me myself, I don't I don't really read a lot of fanfics. Uh, Norman here reads much more. Um, so I the only few ones that I read are, are normally the shorter ones. That's why the things like the comic dubs and uh, the cough particularly stand out. These are yeah. the things that well I'm familiar with, and because your coverage is so wide, I'm, it's bound to be something for everyone if they have just have a look at it. Yeah, true. Well, I'll try to to cover all the, the genres and, and different lengths of things and stuff like that. I mean, apart from anything else, when I've been doing a really big or really involved project, like the five things that never happened to Twilight Sparkle, that took months to put together. It was actually supposed to be the commemorative thing for my 3,000 um, subscribers. 5,000? Uh, 5,000. Uh, yeah, and then it became 5,000 because it took that long to put together. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> it wow. took a long time. Deft Funk, who did the voice of um, Discord, and um, King Sombra. He recorded those back me those for me back in March. <laughs> well, yes. what is it now? It when is it? No, I do. don't believe you. Time flies. It does. But that's one of the reasons why the ones that came after that were all really short. <laughs> I see. Um, because he was sort of was trying to get back into the swing of things, thinking, right, I've concentrated on this thing for so damn long, I need to do something else. So I'll do something short and sweet. Mm. You got me interested. I might think actually have to look at these things. Oh, yes, go. <laughs> it counts. Because I'm a lazy bum and I hate to read, so now I have someone reading to me. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what you could do when you do play it? Um, go like and favorite it. Yeah, yeah yes. I know, I do. The, the trouble yeah. is that when I work, because I work in communication and production, is that I have headphones <laughs> queued up to listen to the production I'm editing. I can't listen to anything else while I'm doing my work. Uh. You know, you could drive home and listen to it. Yeah, the tape deck in my car is spoiled. <laughs> Just turn well, on. Well, we've got more MP3 downloads, so you can get hold of them that way. Yeah, true. Yeah, I tried driving with headphones yesterday. It wasn't very friendly. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. then you're suicidal. But anyway, moving No, I thought I felt, I felt like Grand Theft Auto for a minute. I was like, all right, fine. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but um, um, I, got, I got a question here. And I, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or you mentioned it, but... You're on Ponyville Life, right? Mm hmm yes. Mm, so how, how did you get on there? Like, what was the process? How did you get discovered? Or did you went there and let me in or something like that? <laughs> um, I got asked to do it. Um, TechnoJock listened to some of my readings. Um, it was the, I think it was the Love in All Its Forms and The Bitterness of Mortality, um, which are two sad things I'd done. At that point, I was pretty new to the whole fan experience. And I'd mainly been on film fiction and I'd done a few things on YouTube, and I was, it was in the infancy doing it as a, my sort of like a radio play with sound effects and music and things, and I hadn't done many of them, so I didn't know much about Pony radio stations, I didn't know much about Pony music, so when I got asked if I wanted to do a radio show, at first I thought it was a hoax, I thought somebody was having me on, and I was, I was very, very circumspect, and I went, yeah, cool. It's already right. Robert sounded like that. <laughs> but um, from there, it, it's just sort of lost that was that I'm part of Sonic Radio Boom, which is the, the British Pony Radio Station, which is affiliated with Ponyville Live. And the radio show goes out on Saturdays and it's a fan fiction compilation. That goes out at I think it's three PM EST and um, eight PM BST. And and it goes out on both simultaneously at the weekends. Mm. So usually your show or your recording goes up there first and then on your channel? Uh, no, the, it goes into my YouTube channel first and uh. then the radio show is a compilation of different stories, generally divided by theme. So when it comes to like Halloween, it will be all dark and grim dark pics. Um, mm. And when it was um, the National Armed Forces Day, it was all military themed pics. And when it comes to Christmas, it'll be all heartwarming and winter wrap up pics. Uh, winter wrap up? Wait, <laughs> isn't winter wrap up after Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be sort of thematic the whole of December, I think. Although my birthday is in December, so I might do a special one on my birthday. <laughs> Okay, interesting. So, how has been working with Ponyville Live? Uh, are they easy to work with and stuff? I've 
I've had no difficulties, no. It's all been very smooth for me. Granted, I don't have that much to do with the technical side of things. I tend to produce content and then the people above me take care of actually putting it out there. But I've never had any problems. Oh, okay, cool, cool. That is interesting. Uh, I think you might be the second or... No, I think you might be the first person that we have from Bonneville Life on. Hmm. Ah. Well, technically, if you want to go technical, because um, Bronyville, no, uh, Bronyville, part of them, <laughs> well, we had them on, but they were not part of Bronyville Life, and then Brony Time, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 technicalities, technicalities. Technical difficulties. I'm in my final year of uni, and I'm already exposed to all of this. Why did I choose this career path? <laughs> you know, Dan, it's fate. It's yes, fate. It's meant to be, it will be. Okay, Sera, Sera. Well, like Cutie Mark is telling me. <laughs> True indeed. Oh, talking about cutie marks and ponies, um, I see that here you have, uh, well, in the... Isn't that my question? Yeah, but you're not... Well, it's my question too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you guys... Then I'm going to the patent office. I'm going to trademark that right now. <laughs> okay, then why don't you ask it? Because you seem, you, you seem to be pissy about it. <laughs> of course I'm pissy. I've been asking it for the past God knows how many episodes. Oh yeah, it's yours. Go ahead. <laughs> Yes, we noticed you have a lovely OC. I'm seriously in love with your OC because you chose a color that I think very, very few people have chosen for a body color. And I really like the mane. <laughs> yeah, I love the mane as well. So, same name, Scribbler? Uh, yeah, she's just a, she's sort of a persona. She's a representation of me rather than a separate character. Um, so whenever I have to appear on, on any kind of podcast or anything, she's my representative as opposed to my own mug. Um, okay. Mm. She's actually, there's a story behind how she's designed, actually. Oh. Um, it goes right the way back to 2002, when I wrote first Pony fanfictions for G1. <laughs> there are some looking about on my fanfiction page. But I wrote them for a friend of mine called Harry Riggle, um, who's a girl, my boy, uh, who's been having a terrible time. And I wrote them for her because I knew she was a big pony fan. And as a thank you, she designed a pony sona for me, which was based on, do you remember those all sort of um, rum and monkey personality tests? And there's one you can take where you just put in your name, your age, things like that, and it will give you a pony name and design. And I did one of those, and it came back with one called, um, called Strawberry Hoops, Strawberry Desires, or something. Strawberry Fields, that was it, Strawberry Fields. Oh. Um, and it was a black pony with rainbow mane and strawberry cutie mark with feathered hoofs. And I just kind of, I accept the artwork, and I loved it to pieces, but I forgot about it over the years. When it came to designing a pony sona, I tried so many different things, I didn't like any of them. And I eventually went back. Um, but yeah, I went back to this, and I, the rainbow mane thing after Rainbow Dash arrived was far too cliche. But I stuck to the rest of it because of the memories it evoked in me. That it sort of reminded me of a time of my life where I was really, really happy. So I stuck with that, and, sh- and the only thing I really changed was the main colour. I tried to keep it as simple as I could because looking at all the OCs on TV and I was oh my god! <laughs> Bat wings, demon horns, and. Alicorns! <laughs> well, the funniest way I spent an evening was I, it was meant to be like a five minute search where I just wanted to see what sorts of other things people had when I was actively designing this. So I'll just have a look at the people so I don't think everything too similar. So I put MLPOC. Don't do that. You lose an evening just going, what? You're just looking at <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What? Is that what? Does that thing have a horn growing out of it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But but you, you know, interesting that you said um, said this because I think we can officially say that your OC is Generation One OC, mm-hmm. <laughs> the original. Indeed. Just an Earth pony. Well, what is so angry? Because <laughs> I'm angry a lot of the time. You use Audacity, you know how this. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> everybody. You know I'm the good guy. So yeah, there's, there's one there's one image on there somewhere, but there's a picture of her shaking over at a, at a clock. And that was because where I used to record things, there was a ticking clock in the room, and I hated it. I hate the ticking of clocks. It drives me mental. Uh, but I couldn't. It was too high up the wall because I'm a real shorty, and I couldn't <laughs> get up the wall to get it down the batteries out so i had to concoct this chair mountain <laughs> yes it was it was like something out of the shining where chairs balance on each other at odd angles oh my termination try and get these batteries out of the clock and then i had to hide the clock so nobody put it back on the wall <laughs> while i was recording it was a time if i'd throw something at it it probably would just bounce off and hit me <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way my ru- my luck runs so it was easier just to hide the batteries Mm, okay. okay, but no. Um, who is the artist for your OC? Well, I've had um, several different artists for the OC. Um, there's well, Taser Tail is the one who does the really, really shiny ones, where she's got a sort of square nose. Mm-hmm. Taser Tail, 
takes commissions on Deacon's art and she's got brilliant, shiny, shiny, shiny ponies. The ones that people probably think of, the one which looks really angry is Seahoff. Uh, who mm. actually, he, I think he got um, spotlighted on AQD during Artist Training Ground. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's really good. I think, if I'm remembering properly, he's just um, got involved with Silly Philly Studios, the makers of um, Snowdrop. Oh, okay. He's become one of their artists fairly recently, so great things are happening to him. He's really, really good. Oh, okay. Um, and then there's the end image of all my videos where a little pony owner is curled up and reading from a book to Luna and Bon Bon and Lyra. Um, that was done by Matty 4D, yep. who um, he actually did the comic um, Happy Ends to Hearts and Hooves Day, which is one of the comic dubs I've done. And he made me that image as a thank you, but I didn't know he was going to do it. Uh -huh. And it, it landed in my inbox one day, and I, I actually did shed a tear because it was just, I was so touched by this that it was so beautiful. Hence, I started using it as the end image. It's so pretty. Oh. And the last person who did uh, the image for me of my son was Catnip Fairy, <laughs> which had a good username. Actually, there's, there's two usernames I found that I really like Catnip Fairy and Your Brain on Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I those are best screen names. Did, did Mystical Alpha ever drew an OC for you? Yes, Mystical Alpha is the one that I use as um, standard when I do podcast announcements and things. So yeah. all the do with um, Heroic Tale, the radio play, are Mystic Alpha. Thought I recognised that style. <laughs> yeah, Mystic Alpha has done quite a few pictures for the radio play because each scene. This is one of the reasons it's taking a while to come out is that there's a piece of art. So I like to make things really complicated for myself. <laughs> um, each scene has a different piece of artwork. Um, on the screen for use, on YouTube as it's playing. And Mr. Galf has done several of them. And it's really, really pretty stuff that he's done. I mean, I, I got it back afterwards and I was like, ah! <laughs> Scribble gets all the artists. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, this is what happens when you are the new souls. <laughs> Well, honestly speaking here, honestly speaking here, uh, I'm looking at your view count and you, you are really well known. Not to the degree like what some people might want, but you are well known. Am I? <laughs> yeah, well, your comic dub with MLP comic dub, oh, Rapunzel yeah. collab with Pounds, like that got 12k. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm always surprised when, when I look at these things and think, ah, what? This was me just doing my thing. I think because... Because I'm on the end of making the things, and I, because I know what goes into making it, I don't see it as anything impressive as mm. a final product because I know all the ins and outs of how it happens. Oh, yeah. But other people oh, yes. who just see the finished product might see it differently. Like, like with the core of the Apple things, people keep saying it made them cry. But because I worked on it for so long, it didn't make me cry. <laughs> it made me shout and scream and, and swear a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. But anyway... Yeah. um. Give me a second, give me a second here. Actually, yeah, just before Norman kicks in, um, the second part of the question that I'd like to make a fuss about is also, I can't really see your cutie mark, what is it? Huh? It's two feather quills surrounded by stars. Okay, so... Uh, it, was, it was mainly yeah. because the original cutie mark she had, which is on the... Um, Generation the, 1? Ca the cat fairy uh, pictures was a quill, and I didn't realise at that point that Fastycorn has a quill, and it felt really, really uh, self-indulgent to have the same... <laughs> cutie mark as the show's creator so that I could have to change this um, but I still like the idea because at that point I was more a writer than a reader uh, of fan fictions so I thought I'll stick with the quill motif but I'll just make it two quills as it is and as it was um, Seahawk added the stars and I just liked them so I didn't put the stars in there they kind of happened my OC happened by accident a lot oh okay yeah it's, it's meant to just represent um, the written words because everything I do in fandom seems to revolve around the written words either reading it or writing it. So it was meant to, my cutie mark talent is the written word. Sounds logic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Well, if I'm going to mark of anything, it would be off that. Yeah, true indeed, true indeed. All right, so being in the UK, have you been to any of the conventions around there? I haven't. Buck happened last weekend, and unfortunately I said I was in Wales um, on a family holiday. So I couldn't really uh, do that one. Yeah, I would, I would love to have gone, but it just, that had been arranged for nearly a year. So <laughs> I really couldn't get out of that one. So the next I, nearest one would be Brony Days, right? I don't know. I don't. I've never been to a convention before, so I don't really know much about them or where they are or anything like that. Brony Days is in France. But is would, it? You, would you would you like go to a convention and give it a chance? If it was in the UK and it coincided with a weekend, yes, I would go. 
you can't really take time off work. So I was gonna say. <laughs> All right. You know, you could always go to France. Like, allons-y. Let's go to France. <laughs> allons-y. Yeah. Um, I was in France fairly recently. I was think. <laughs> I, I passed through France on my way home. But no, I probably wouldn't go there for a convention. If I'm being honest. <laughs> okay, so October 26th to 27th hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet, but it's a bit of a commute, I'm thinking. Yeah, true, adorable. true. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> He's just grumpy all the time. I might be wearing, like, bonbons so much because my own OCD is really grumpy. Yeah, that, that makes it a striking resemblance. <laughs> I hadn't realised that until I just, literally, that's just occurred to me. Well, maybe I like bonbon because she's my excuse to be grumpy. <laughs> Yay. Actually, Madam, yeah. could you do like a grumpy bonbon bon voice for us? Like, imagine your bonbon bon and that clock is really ticking you off. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, clock on the wall is really getting on my nerves. <laughs> All right. Oh, that, reminds me of, that reminds me of someone. What are you laughing at? Oh, I'm trying to remember. What are you going to say? <laughs> I can't help it. I think I have a friend who talked like that. I can't remember. <laughs> That is so awesome, seriously. That Actually, is... that's, that's what, what I say, gangster accent. It's meant to be old school New York, but I've been told that I'm on Boston. <laughs> New York, right, right. It's New York. That's right. It was, that's based entirely on the fact that um, in Lesson Zero, um, she mm-hmm. had a New York accent for that one scene, which went, that beautiful, amazing dog. Oh, oh yes. yes. Yeah, and when I started writing a fan fiction about her a while ago, I had Hold on, guys, someone's phone's it. going off. It's mine going off in the background, but I know oh, it's so sorry. for us. <laughs> I know who that one is. It's people trying to sell me stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, how do you again, tell? Call ID. Around about this time, there's nobody who's actually going to be ringing me because they're all in the car on the way home. Okay. And I've we had oh, we've had words before now about using phones in the car. <laughs> okay. I forgot what I'm saying now. <laughs> I'm so, sorry, so sorry, so sorry. You're, you're talking about accent New York. No? Oh, yeah. Um, and I started writing a, a fan fiction about Bon Bon. That I, I stopped writing it so I could write Playing With My Heart, the Octavia vinyl thing that's currently being posted on fan fiction. Um, but the Bon Bon thing is called Bon Bon Demon Slayer, which originally was meant to be a Mickey tape of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> and, it. And instead turned into something quite epic and quite involved. And at the last count, it's, what was it, 180,000 words, and it's only got a third of the way through. Mm. So I guess you jumped on it because you're a Buffy fan as well? Buffy fan, yes. Very much a Buffy fan. Um, and in that one, I wrote her as coming from Manhattan because it was part of a block point. And it just sort of grew from there that I really liked the idea of her having this Manhattan accent which came out as old school New York. Mm. It's like 1930s gangster New York. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> like the real accent at all. So mm. I apologise if I've really paid off anybody who's actually from New York. This is my really bad impression based on old black and white movies of gangsters and things. Oh, it's what about like you know, <laughs> <laughs> What about like her other voices like that one that Mine's got rocks in it voice. <laughs> Mine's got rocks in it <laughs> what, what kind of voice is that really? I'm not really sure. That, um, <laughs> annoyed bon bon um, voice. She's always it. annoyed. <laughs> she's always yeah, she was I didn't put those rocks in my bag. <laughs> I didn't. That's so awesome. <laughs> no, but um, Scribble, I, I, I... We have to do it. Scribble, I noticed something here and maybe it's my fault for not asking, but you have a FilmFic account. I do, yes. <laughs> I have a FilmFic account, yes. Oh, now, now I'm curious. What stories have you written besides the one that you said about Bon Bon? Well, that one's not actually been posted yet. The one that seems to be getting attention at the moment is one called Playing With My Heart, which is um, a vinyl scratch Octavia... Hey, this! Oh. I've seen this before. Have you? It, it got onto the um, feature box when it was first posted, which flabbergasted me. I woke up at six o'clock in the morning. I was on my way to work, and I got ping email. You're awesome. And your your pick has been ratified. It's on the account. All oh, right. Hang on, it's on the front page. Yeah, I've oh. seen this before because I I I remember the art, and yeah. Yes, that's, the, that's that's what I was talking about. That he did the cover art for that, and he's the one who's now at Silly Philly Studios. Um, and it's amazing cover art. It's just, it's really evocative. It's far better than the fiction that I've like that, I suspect. <laughs> but the art is far better than the fan fiction, I think. Oh. People seem to really like it. And, and that's the one that uh, people seem to have fastened on to. Ah. Now you've given me a reason to stick around film fic just looking at what you've done. <laughs> yeah, I haven't uploaded much to fan fiction recently simply because of doing the fan fiction readings instead. And also because 
I'm still posting at fanfiction.net for my other fandoms, but there's a Final Fantasy VII fanfiction I've been writing for, oh, hang on, since 2009, oh uh, that I'm still posting now. Yeah, it was a trilogy of fics, and I'm just getting to the end of the second one. It's all written, it's just taking ages to edit and put it out. Uh, but it's called Triangle of Many Sides. And it's, how long is it now? It's like 500 pages long in Word. So it's taking, I post that and other things from other fandoms as well as doing the rest of it. So it takes me a while to get stuff out because I do stuff outside of ponydom. Ah, so so basically you're, you're a pony of many talents. <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> as long as it's to do with fan fiction anyway. <laughs> Uh, you know, stealing, stealing people's vocal cords doesn't end there. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is one of her talents. Oh, yes. I'm really an evil mastermind. This was all I planned. Think... Her appearance on the show was all planned. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like, Malaysia, next target. I'll be in slowly. <laughs> She's like, I have to learn the Malaysian accent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm, true, 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 true. Guys, do you, do you have any more questions? Well... Most of them were pertaining to the con, actually. I thought if she said yes to a con, there'd be so much more I could ask. But yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but everybody else was the con. I was standing on top of a mountain <laughs> shouting, Where am I? <laughs> It'll be like, in, in, you're, you're getting there with the GPS and then try, <laughs> trying to find your way to the center. Work in Wales? Wales? The part of Wales I was in is very, very rustic. It's <laughs> by a place called Barmouth. And Barmouth is a seaside town, a tourist place. It's lovely. I've been going there for years. But... It's surrounded by really steep mountains. <laughs> if you want to get anywhere in Barmouth, they cut the roads through the mountain. So there's, there's like tons and tons of rock on either side of you that's held back by what looks like chicken wire. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's scary. <laughs> there's not much um, signal for anything over there. No oh. <laughs> you, you know what? I, I, I think you know, your tongue-tongue will say, the great and powerful Trixie may not, um, cannot help you now because she has no signal. And then suddenly the screen changes and poof, she's running away. <laughs> great and powerful Trixie says, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> then suddenly the moment, if, if you end up a brony days, you enter France and, bienvenue en France. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hot cuisine, then. You have her hot cuisine giving you the oh, yeah, hot cuisine can do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Anyway, guys, uh, final last check. Any more questions? Uh, maybe just one question. Are right. you hyped up for season four, Scribble? I am indeed. Uh, that said, um, there's one episode I still haven't seen for season three, and I can't remember which one it was now. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> it's the end of Games Pony Play. Pony um, play. The last just because, one? Yeah. This Magical Mystery. No, no, I've no. Seen no. That I've seen the finale. It was the one where they've got um, this harsh Winnie. Oh, games when you play, that one. The things that were going wrong just made me cringe so much. Cringy, cringy, cringy. Uh, um, yeah. that, that kind of thing where people are, people, ponies or characters are trying so hard to give everything to go wrong. I'm just, it, it makes me cringe. In, I know they're fictional characters. I know it's ridiculous. Oh. But it pains all the way through going, ah, no! That's a sign of a great show. It is, it's make you if it can make your toes physically curl up and try to enter your foot from the other side yeah. <laughs> I usually stopped it as if a show can make me feel uncomfortable and it's a good show then it's like wow what an analogy <laughs> you make the best analogy Scrooge <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of good writing isn't it, for a show if it can make you feel things and make you feel for the characters mm-hmm. and make you actually want to watch them even if you don't particularly like them and that happens a lot with them, that it's lots of characters in it I'm not too fond of, but I'll still watch because they're so well written. Mm, true, true. Like I wasn't I wasn't very fond of Trixie when she first appeared <laughs> at all. She didn't like her. She's grown on me now, to the point where she's actually a main character uh, in the radio play. Oh. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, she is. Um it's the, the radio play is taking a long time, but it's uh it was originally called The Misadventures of Honey and Bucket. <laughs> and, and they're the main characters is Honey, a um, mare and Bucket, um Stallion. He's being played by Pounce. Um, who I did, he, he read My Limitless Lily, the uh, fan fiction I released recently. Oh. He's an amazing voice actor, he really is. He's not from New York at all. That, that fan fiction he did in a New York accent, far better than my New York accent. <laughs> uh, he's, he's not um, got an accent like that in real life at all, it's just that good. But he's playing Bucket, and I Am Shadow 007 um, oh. is playing Trixie. She was the voice of Scootaloo in Congratulations video. And oh. she's really, really good. I'm writing chapter two at the moment, because although this, the storyline is planned, 
and most of the cast has been cast. That is um, I'm I'm head scriptwriter, so I'm ah. writing scripts as well as everything else. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've been with a lot of pies. Nice. I'm, I'm writing the scripts of all six episodes. Nice, a pony of many talents. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just very briefly, well, what do you think of Equestria Girls? Well, I've seen of it because I've only watched half the movie yet. Oh. Okay, we won't spoil it for you then. Mm-hmm. No, no, I know the, I know the ending. I've seen enough reviews of it and things like that. So I know, what, I know exactly what happens. And I've seen a lot of the animation. I just haven't watched it all in sequence yet. Where it's the order it's supposed to run in. Um, what do I think that I've missed opportunity? Is what I think of it. Uh-huh. Really, really good. I've seen high school um, alternative universes really work. X-Men Evolution was one of my very, very fandoms. And it took the concept of X-Men and put it in high school. It shouldn't have worked, but it did. And it worked really, really well. And Equestria Girls could have done that. It could have done something really impressive. And instead, it came out with something that was okay, but just a bit mediocre. Mm, True. Their original goal was to sell toys, so they did. Make money, sell yeah. toys, make money, sell toys. <laughs> now the toys are making money, the toys are freaking me out. <laughs> I <laughs> thought... Seen, you're not the, the target action. audience. <laughs> True. Have you seen the live-action music video from Equestria Girls? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> I did. No, no, okay, guys, 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 guys. I, I want to keep that for later when oh. we don't have... I want to keep that for later because um, I know, you know Dan's that gonna... I won't shut up about it. Yeah, so I'm just going to end this interview section because um, I, I, I think every... I think everybody is excited about talking about that one. Yay, yeah, there are two grumpy people on the show now. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Um... Grumpy dog in the background, if anybody can hear oh, that. Oh, doggy, doggy. Yes. She's not a little doggy, she's quite a big doggy, and she's going crackers in the hall. Uh, she's so probably just her... No, it's probably... She's um, a guard dog. She's a... Well, she thinks she's a guard dog. She's a cow in guard dog. What breed is she? She's a doberman. Oh, my. Okay, yeah, she's she's the runt of her litter, though. So she's small, the regular one. Mm. Um, but and she's a coward. She is such a coward. It's <laughs> great. There's a pony in the front yard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she actually she ran away with my big Mac um, blind bag toy. Oh I god! Spent, yeah, spent fifteen minutes chasing her around the house with that going, Don't swallow it. Don't chew it. Don't leave it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Got a couple of scratch marks. To talk to you. Oh my! Okay, so um, I, I think we can end this interview, right? Yeah, leave it on that one. Uh, the image of the dog running away with a big Macintosh in her mouth. Well, uh, I'll try and bring it up to a high note. And in so. season four, we see Big Mac as a phobia of dogs. <laughs> now we know why. Yes, we need it. Well, phobia of dogs. How would that work with Winona? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> so now you... we know who's the real head of the Apple family. It's the dog. <laughs> 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 So, <laughs> yep. So anyway, that, that was our guest Scribbler. Um, her stuff is awesome. Go look at it. And thank you, Scribbler, for coming on our little show. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. <laughs> I so, had a blast. So anyway, um, where can they find you besides the YouTubes? Uh, I'm on Film Fiction. I'm known as Obab Scribbler there. Um, same as on YouTube. And on fanfiction.net, where I'm known as Scribbler, and I have a DVD art account, but it's generally just looking to collect fanfictions. But if you want to go and see my very old drawings there, oh. you can see that too. I've seen them, and it's pretty good. <laughs> Those were done while I was um, tempting, and I was bored. <laughs> I was really into Danny Fandom. <laughs> Danny Fandom, so I was, I was drawing stuff from that. Mm-hmm. Hence, it's, again, it's a grumpy character. It's Sam from Danny Fandom, but keep reading really, really <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 now I'm seeing a team, and I also saw Rogue from X Men Evil. Yes, yeah. uh, she's looking slightly grumpy in that yeah. one. I used to enter fan, uh, fan art competitions when I was in X Men Evolution fandom, but that one fell by the wayside a long time ago. Mm. Anyway. Actually, are there any, you know, My Little Pony fanfic competitions? I've never heard of any. Uh, there was one for Buck. I remember that one coming out, but I don't oh, think there's any fiction competitions apart from Napa Remo. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I love doing um, 30 minute ponies challenges, the um, 30 minute fan fiction challenge. Oh my where God. They, they, they give you a theme or a, a prompt, and it's six hours where you're allowed to submit on Tumblr. It's called 30 minute ponies t- uh, Tumblr. You can, you can only write yeah, a link for that. I would love to try that. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll put it into the text chat. Um, but it's literally, if you just go 30 minute ponies into Google, all one word, and it comes back. And it's, you're only allowed to write for half an hour, and you post it, and they put it on the Tumblr, and they can give you critiques uh, on a Tuesday, or just re- regular comments on any other day. And it's so much fun. Mm. Um, but apart from that, and, and the challenges, the flashback challenges on... Yeah, it, 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 
Judy. Yeah, I, I think there's those. I can't think of any more challenges or competitions apart from the stuff on Live Journal. Oh yeah, I have a Live Journal as well. <laughs> I that. I'm about scribbler over there as well. That's old. I haven't been that in a while. But there's, I used to do old fan fiction reviews for different fandoms. So if anybody wants to see my old text-based fan fiction reviews, they're all over there. Okay, okay. Rex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll add in to the show notes the so one that I can find. It says there are prompts. So is that like the start of the story? Yeah, that's you've got to write the story about that thing. Oh, okay, so you continue on, and uh, is there a t- word limit or a minimum or something? Well, it doesn't have to be you carry on the story they've given. It's, it says the prompt in bold, and it's a little sentence that comes afterwards. That's the prompt. You can write about anything you want as long as it's to do with that prompt. You write 30 minutes. You're not allowed to go beyond 30 minutes. You can spend time planning that outside the 30 minutes, but you're only allowed to actually be typing for half an hour. And then you just email it through the... It's really fun. If anybody wants to have a go at it, it's so much fun. Yeah, I really want to try this. It's like it's like Nano Remo in half an hour. <laughs> mm, it just really appeals to me because I've got short attention span. <laughs> so I'm gearing up for Nano this year, and I can't wait for it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can fit it in cause for my first Nano because I didn't really get into the whole Brony Dem until October last year. I was. I was You're doing Nano as well. I'm going to try. It depends on what my workload's like in real life. When do, when is Nano Remo? No, September. 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 No, Nano Na- is September. Nano, Nano is September. Napo is September. Did I say that right? No. November Nano is Nano is November. Yeah. That's, oh, God. <laughs> My brain hurts. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll... Now, this year I've got so many things to do, you know, there's extra life, I've got to shave my moustache, and then i got no to write. <laughs> Well, anyway, um, I, I, we'll leave that on a high note, and I'll add in all the show notes in later. <laughs> all right. Yep, the Thank dog agrees. Yes, okay, she okay, does. Okay. <laughs> Boss has spoken. <laughs> oh, my yes. goodness. Well, yes, my lord and my mistress, <laughs> the pooch, spoken. <laughs> I own people's souls. She owns mine. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> So, um... Behind every man, there's a successful woman. But behind, behind every successful every woman... woman. It's a dog! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, so, anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And, wow, this is a rare one. Email time. Awesome. Mm. So, this is going to be an interesting one. So, how did Norman, Daniel, the cat, and guess, and he forget to mention Charlie, because Charlie has not been on all the time. Um, just out of curiosity... What crossover would you guys like to see in My Little Pony? For me, I always thought it would be interesting to see Super Sentai Kyoryu Gear and My Little Pony crossover when the piece of the... Oh, oh he did not put a comment. Sorry, um, where the peaceful world of Equestria meets the alien menace called the boss And uh, <laughs> I'm just reading here, man. No, no, no the way he wrote it is uh, he called the boss. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, um, and the main, po- uh, and the six main ponies and Super Sentai most work together to save Equestria. Sincerely, Darkest Knight. P.S. Must work together. What is most work together? I, I got no idea. I'm sorry, Darkest Knight. It's just that. that He's our only fan. Don't you dare. That's a funny email. Anyway, um, P.S. Here's some Nightmare Fuel. Enjoy. And look down. Okay, there's... Take that back. <laughs> uh... I like that drawing. Yep. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, well, okay, guys. For everyone here, what do you think? There's only one balloon decorator in this <laughs> podcast. Why do you do this to me? <laughs> oh, thank you, Darkus. You're awesome. No, but what, what crossover would you would like to see? Um, let's go ladies first. Uh, we're talking in terms of fan fiction or in terms of just actual show? Mm. Like in fan art, uh, animations. Fiction, that no, you know, anything, yeah, any, anything that you personally want. Doctor Who, that would be my first one, it's just because it would slot in so nicely. Doctor I Who, I think. I thought you would say X-Men. I don't see how X-Men would fit in, that's the thing. X-Men, x ponies, mutant ponies. My ponies can already do everything, so mutant powers would be quite the same. You think there's already a bit of a crossover, you know, Princess Celestia's school for gifted unicorns. <laughs> True, although she's got a lot more hair than Professor Xavier. <laughs> Right, right. And she can fly. Professor Xavier is what? Telepathy. Well, he, he, did, can... he did fly in the last X-Men movie. Uh, yes, that's true. Mm, true. But not, not for very long before he went to Pop. Yes, I know. <laughs> that was like, he can fly now? Oh, okay. no, wait, you can't. 
Oh, okay, so you would say Doctor Who, an official Doctor Who then, like Doctor Who and ponies, not, not yeah. the. I like the I like the idea of um, Doctor Who being um, a time lord in disguise. Um, um, there was a, a a video I watched a while back, and it was one of the um, CGI pony ones where he leaves and turns back into a human as he leaves, and Dirty's all sad. And that whole concept, I really liked it. Have you seen oh, it? I guess I have. Yes, I have. I can't remember what it's called. I don't want to borrow or something like that. But it was um, it was so well done. It's made me think, yeah, that would actually really work because it would work in the background. But it would have to be finite to have the right emotional impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what else? Hasbro's going to gonna do it. <laughs> Never. <laughs> that's no, if they did it, it'll be like an outhouse just painted blue and that's the TARDIS. <laughs> yeah. I think that would take quite some time to come out because if I remember correctly, that was made in Blender and things made in Blender takes a very long time yeah. to do. I'm yeah. trying to learn Blender and I can't yeah. get around it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, Daniel, what about you? What crossover you want to see? You may slam me for this later, but I want to see a Care Bears crossover. <laughs> yeah, works. Hang on. Early Care Bears or that pukey little remake? Which pukey little remake? <laughs> the recent pukey little remake. The 3D one. The 3D one's fine. I meant the 2D puke thing. The, 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 the one where they're living in premium real estate. Mm, I've not seen a lot of the remakes of Care Bears. 2007, uh, eight, yeah, 2007. Yeah, there was a, there was a, I think it's a more recent one, but I was not a fan of. The re- the more recent one is there Back to the Jungle. It's because it's like it's, the first generation they were living in just pure cloud, cloud, cloud. Second one they had houses, and the third one they had prime real estate. <laughs> mm. Because like, again, I grew up with Care Bears, so I'm a bit defensive of Care Bears. <laughs> yes, do that. I could see Care Bears and Police working, actually. Didn't they have a crossover back then before? No, they were two different companies. Oh. Because Care Bears was actually owned by Nelvana for the um, animation. And I thought it was American Greetings. Uh, but I was going to say, the rights of the whole thing belong to American Greetings, because they were originally... Oh, okay. It was like Deedle in Europe. There's a, a character called Deedle, D-I-D-L. And he exists only in merchandise. He doesn't have a show, doesn't have He's just, And that was originally Care Bears. They were just the merchandise. Ah, I see. And then they got turned into some really... There's, um... On that guy with glasses.com, there's, um... Oh, I can't remember his name. Doug Walker? No, no, not him. Is There's a, another reviewer who... Guy or girl? And he, he does... Uh, he's a big Brony fan. He's, he's done a few reviews of Mark Funny episodes. Oh, um... He's a critic. No, it's, um, Chet Rocco. Yes, Chet Rocco. Um... And he did a retrospective of Care Bears, and I learned all about how they came to be, because I had no idea how they started out until I watched that video. It was really informative, actually. Yeah, true. Uh, Care Bears in their very first video outing were hardcore, <laughs> but Professor Coldheart was a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much sense! Oh, my God! <laughs> it was come off that way, but... He, he kidnaps the small boy and sits behind him on a bike <laughs> and makes this really weird face and starts working his hips and thinking, this is for children. <laughs> my mind is like blown right now. Oh my God. That makes so much sense. I did not make that connection. Oh goodness me, oh goodness oh, my. Oh my gosh. The very, very first Care Bear cartoon that they made, the one off is given away with toys. <laughs> and and I was given a, a Throat Crystal Care Bear um, when they were 20 years old, because so was I, because <laughs> I was born the same as well. And um, it, was, it came with a videotape, it's like how long ago this was, it came with a videotape with the very first episode on it, and I watched it. And the Care Bears, they used um, Tender Heart, he gets out these two hearts, and he uses them to, cl- to climb a sheer brick wall. I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> Care Bears were actually badass in the day. Yeah, they were, but... <laughs> and he flings them like sugar again. it's great. Tether Heart only has one heart. They kept putting out more with Tether Bear's there. <laughs> oh, right, yes, that's true. Yes, he made actual physical little hearts and used them to climb up a wall, like um, grappling hooks. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Is that What got me pretty ticked off is that the, in the recent season, uh, Tether Heart was such a background character. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, he, he was pushed completely to the back, and the one who was in the front was actually played by Ashley Ball, who was Oopsie. Really? <laughs> Yeah. And best part of Oopsie, he didn't have a belly badge. 
was uh, blank. He drew it with a he drew his own with a crayon, and he drew whatever uh, he wanted, just no use. It doesn't work. <laughs> but anyway, Charlie, what about you? The crossover I would like to see. Mm, realistically speaking, within the hub, uh, I would like to see a Dan versus and my little funny crossover. <laughs> no, seriously, that's that's the only thing which I can think of which is even remotely feasible because if they want to cross over within their own universe. They don't have to worry about any copyright infringement. Uh, and true. that would be the funniest, I think. That applies to the little pet shop as well. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I haven't seen much of LPS, so... <laughs> oh, you well, watch Dan versus no one there. I, I don't watch it, you know. It's because of the comics. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, Fluffle Puff. Fluffle Puff. Do you, yeah. What's that? Uh, mixer. Divin, uh, what? Puffy uh, Mixer. Funny makes it right, <laughs> but if if all else were let loose uh, and I can cross over anything, maybe with some something Disney related because you know it's it's nostalgia and childhood. Anything Disney related would be nice in the crossover. Oh, okay, cool. We'll go completely left like field. Go Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been done, I think. Like there's a rule on the what? net where it's on the net. It's a pony version of it. Yeah, there needs to be a rule. Like that is nothing. <laughs> That is, I think it's 34B or something. Yeah, something like that. Why? <laughs> no, it is. I, I think so. And, and so, as for me, um, here's my fantasy uh, crossover that I want. Mm-hmm. Um, MLPG4 crossover with MLPG1. Mm, interesting concept. Yeah, then I can see surprise. That would be mm-hmm. nice. Actually, that's genius. Well, think about it. Because you got the schmooze in part one, uh, in generation one. And then, like, if that comes into generation uh, four, and then, like, you got to- uh, Twilight Twinkle or something like that? I forgot. Um, Her name is just Twilight in the first one. She was just Twilight. Yeah. And then Twilight comes into the fourth generation. And then, like, <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> Twilight, like, ah, what is going on? First generation Applejack meeting everybody else. Because first generation Applejack has such a strange voice. <laughs> just seeing her trying to interact with... Uh, G4. Oh, that could be funny. Yeah, and then, like, oh, God. She talks, she's like, Applejack, anyone? She talks like that. Um, honey, I think you got a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Come on, Applejack. To be fair, she did get turned into a giant dragon monster at one point, so she's probably got PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, this this is gonna be awesome! I, I wish that happened. And Firefly with Rainbow Dash. Oh, that's gonna yeah. be fun. Well, there's lots of canons about Rainbow Dash and um, Firefly being her mum. Mm, yeah. <laughs> there's that, yeah. There's that um, Rainbow Dash Academy where she was a the, the fan comic. Have you seen this? Yeah, yeah. I have. It's a long-standing fan comic where she's one of Rainbow Dash's classmates. Oh it's yeah, I see like that. Love, and looking like a love interest, actually. <laughs> a well-developed love interest. That's actually really good. Uh, then, then one time I want, there's actually an episode of G1 where they've got... Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's, I think it was called Storybook Door, where they've got this giant door they find in the mountains. They uncover it from a rock slide. And it, when you go to open this door, characters from fiction come out of it and Ooh. join the real world. So things like Robin Hood's... Because uh, humans apparently exist in... in yeah, yeah. And um, they had Robin Hood come out. They had... Um, what else was it? Uh... Lancelot and Guinevere came out. I just always, I just wanted to see what would happen if you put that into G4 and had Daring do in here. Oh, <laughs> that would be so awesome. And yeah, Norman wants yeah. something like that. True indeed. Mm. Oh, and, and just for the fun of it, like, since we're all dirty here, um, I want to see a crossover between Saints Row and Ponies. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> since everyone's dirty here, why not join the hype train? Saints Row and Ponies, mm. make it happen. The derby will fall. Derby will fall through an aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what went wrong. Uh, but anyway, um, thanks for the question, Darkest Knight. I, I hope you were entertained by our answer, and please do send more because this is really fun. And moving on, uh, here is usually where the show ends, but since um, Scriber brought it up and Daniel has a lot of opinions on it, I'm just going to call this topic time. I'm just going to call it topic time and or discussion yeah I'm just going to call it discussions and we all know that the music video for Equestria Girl was out and made and a lot of us seen it and well as for me personally for me I don't really care for it because to me it's just a one shot that I think I think it's a one shot but what do the rest of you no, think it's a one shot what do the rest of you think like um, let's go with ladies first I think Flash Sentry has the potential to become quite an interesting character if they develop him. If they bring him in and he actually plays a functional role, I think it would be really interesting to see what happens with him. Mm. The idea of introducing a canonical sort of tweeny, <laughs> as far as you can get away with it in a tween show, romance 
I want mm. to see how the family would implode. So, are, you saying, are you implying that you think there could be a series based on Equestria Girls? Oh, oh God, I don't know about that. Uh, I can see them doing it, actually. I can see them doing something like that because it did, for all intents and purposes, it did what it was supposed to. It sold toys, it made money, it opened up um, the way for them to do an, an entirely alternative universe because the Twilight of their world wasn't in it. So you could conceivably start from scratch and have her coming to school and being a normal girl. But it would I think that would fall into the same trap that a lot of the Barbie movies have fallen into. That, oh, yes. Yeah, I've watched a lot of the Barbie movies because the voice actors who were in that, I started watching them because the entire cast of the first few movies was the cast from X-Men Evolution. <laughs> and I just had vocal crush on a lot of them. Yeah, I loved listening to them. Uh, although it was funny because the voice of Scarlet Witch was the voice of Barbie. I was just waiting for it to go back crazy <laughs> all the way through. I can but imagine then, if like, Hugh Jackman was doing that, uh, um, Ken, that would be that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, even um, this way. Yeah, as far as Equestria Girls goes, I think I can see them doing a spin-off show. I don't think I would watch it. No, but uh, have um, you seen... I like the idea of Flash Sentry, the actual Flash Sentry pony, becoming part of G4 canon properly in the mm-hmm. show. But have you seen the music video? I have. I watched it last night. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah here, here's, uh, the, here's the thing that Dan's afraid of. Uh, you know what, Dan? Is your, um, is your opinion, why don't you uh, state about it? Uh, well, basically, a few months ago, I, I found out that um, through Equestria Daily that Hasbro was doing a casting for a live-action Equestria... Uh, My Little Pony. Not Equestria Girls. My Little Pony. So I thought, okay, they can't be serious. But the documents were there. They were actually looking for cast to play ponies or people or God knows what. So I told Norman, and Norman was like, yes, don't worry about it. It's just a rumor or something. And I thought, all right, fine. I pray you're right. And then suddenly this video comes on. They said, it's Equestria Girls as Humans. I'm like, that's what it is, right? The girls became humans. Said, no, human, humans. Okay, fine. I turn it on. I watch it. And I'm like, good Lord. It's like, your worst nightmare came true. Why? has brought why because of who it the intended audience is exactly exactly but then like I said I was an old school pony fan and I can remember them doing stuff like this before in the 80s and aiming it at me at the age I was then so it's not a new thing it's not a welcome it's not a new thing yeah but and then I I think you might be overreacting here let's just say that I always overreact yeah, you, you and your overreacting us. But no, let's just say that they're looking for cast, they're looking for stuff, and they got the cast of people who were in the video. But technically, it's just a music video. There's nothing to be afraid of. I, I mean, know, I know. But the thing is, you know, benefit of the doubt, and I'm making a slippery slope argument here, you know, I, I hope this is where it ends. Yeah, I, to me, like, okay, I have been wrong on multiple times with this kind of thing, and, well... Um, I take everything with a grain of salt and I don't even care about this. But to me, this is just a one-shot music video deal because, well, it's time kill to play on the hub. And it's technically not related to ponies and they don't have to hire the HX to make more stuff. It kind of reminds me a lot of um, old-school Disney Channel where they used to have just... When this a show would run short or a movie would run short and they had to have the show on the hour, they would make little music videos out of different shows and things. Or they would have Disney Channel stars, who were just the actors from their live action shows, singing songs from the movies. And it just strikes me as being something really like that. Yeah. And yes. I don't know who these six girls are. No, they, they're just there to fill up. They're just no. generic. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're just they generic are. girls, that's all. It's... <laughs> Just be thankful it's not... The actual movie wasn't like that because that would have been the Bratz movie all over again. Oh, oh yeah. We don't need that. True. I mean, basically, in my 4 a.m. yesterday morning, you know, grumpy chat that I had with a few friends, we all said one thing. Why the heck wasn't Michelle Kreber part of this? You do know that they have to pay Michelle Kreber, right? What, they didn't have to pay these girls? Well, they pay for different yeah, costs. Yeah, less. Yeah. Like, well, professional they'll just be people who well, come to a casting call. Then, <laughs> they won't have agents or anything yeah. they didn't even look like they paid for proper helium no, then, see, I'm sorry I vent because I'm a balloon artist yeah I know but the thing is you have to remember budget 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 uh, we yeah. do this we do this show for free and when you have a big multi-billion dollar company who is just they're wasting money for this thing like you want to spend as less as possible unless it's a charity event where you can deduct tax from it my brain's beginning to hurt. 
And you're still... I mean, I mean, I understand that it's. Comp- I understand that I have to understand that Hasbro is doing this, that, this, that. But when it comes to the bottom line, I'm not a six year old girl. Was that I'm a fan of the show and I'm not impressed. Yeah, but, then, but you see, it comes you're not from, a six year old girl. We, that's the thing. We, we are not the target audience. That is the first yeah. and foremost thing you have to remember. And Hasbro is marketing to little girls. Why did the pony is always being for little girls and the, the parents who watch the show. We are kind of like a side um, side uh, market, which uh, Hasbro already has got uh, gotten the brains to actually uh, mine on that by, 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 by merchandising to us. But that's not the whole point altogether. The whole point, little girls still the audience. The question you should be asking, is this video suitable for little girls? Do you want your kid to watch this? Yeah. I would say yes. I would say it's good for a little kid. True. I think that was the biggest wake-up call to me because um, I get so into fan of things you kind of forget it's one of the reasons I've managed to not watch one of the episodes from the actual canon but uh, like watched everything for the Dot Mob series um, okay but, <laughs> yeah I, I've managed to keep completely up with fandom and not actually catch up with the show itself ah, um, I, 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 I think with a lot of Brodydom um, canon is almost incidental mm, but it's true. the fandom itself that they fell in love with yes. not mm, true. the show the show is something that they like but they love fandom. Exactly. I don't know how prevalent that is. But okay. That makes lot sense, though. It is. Oh, for the, re- for the record, I... communities like that. Yeah, for the record, I'm in it for the show, but I I do know a, a good number of people who are just in it because of the fandom. Come for the yeah. show, stay for the fandom. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that, that is true. Come for the fandom, think, oh, there's a show attached. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Yeah, that, yeah, that is true. Cotton, oh, there's a show? <laughs> oh, oh, before I, I forget... Say, yeah, yeah I, I need to input a little something which I can recall. I, I believe Megan McCartney said that Flash Sentry would not be part of season four. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe Flash Sentry might go into a new series altogether. Whatever, fanfic writers. Yeah, but yeah. There's a Flash Sentry. Yeah. I've, I've already found a really good fanfiction uh, with him, which actually <laughs> I've dubbed. Uh, hey. the, the Flashlight Shipping? <laughs> it is. It's, um, I think it's... To my dear, my prince, yeah, dear princess on the eve of my departure. It's a story that was on EQD a while ago, and Kumbasa has dubbed it with me, and that one should be out in a couple of weeks. Yay. Um, but that's the thing that maybe that fic is what made me think. Actually, this might be interesting because I kind of the whole thing had, had bypassed me. But um, I'm sorry, just wondering what the dog's got crazy again downstairs. Nope, there's no bit of trouble. It's pretty squirrel. She seems to the patio doors. Mm. <laughs> she goes crack as anything with fur and feet in the car. <laughs> oh, we've got a cat who uh, called Hugo who's moved into the area recently and he sits on the other side of the patio door and will put his paw on there and it's the cat equivalent of the peeping the bird. <laughs> but I'm out here, you cannot get at me. Ha ha ha, doggy. <laughs> She's running around, knocking over ornaments. Um, jumping off the settee, tearing up the carpet, throwing herself at the glass. Yeah, you should probably here. And the cat is just sitting there watching her. <laughs> uh, cats are the superior race. Behind every <laughs> successful dog, there's a cat. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Man, woman, dog, cat on the back. Mm, Opal lessons is the boss. <laughs> Indeed. Already, the opalescence was secretly an evil genius controlling the entire of NLP universe. <laughs> Given that face, I would think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they said who created Celestia Luna it was Opal. <laughs> That's why she's superior all the time and doesn't bother with little social niceties. She doesn't need to. Mm, true. No, but um, I'm getting back to the topic at hand. The music yeah. video. To me, uh, the music video was pretty... Well, let's just say that they inserted dance move for us to dance to the song. Yeah, so to dance to, I'm... Mm-hmm. What? I can't wait to the next con where somebody tries to do that as a flash mob. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Because think about it. They dance in the show. At least you got a general idea how it looks. Now they added more moves. So you could do it if you wanted to. And no. I was in a chat with a friend and we said, why don't we, do this? Why don't we go somewhere and do a... Uh, before before the video came out, there was this help trying to win the crown flash mob. Usually we go kick kick things around, doom chak, doom doom chak, and they said, "What if you kick someone else's thing? Somebody's gonna get up, doom chak, doom doom chak, hey hey," and then somebody gets a punch in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, red mood slightly. Yeah, no, but uh, honestly speaking, um, uh, the song was <laughs> okay, doggy. <laughs> she let you out like her. Anyway, um, the song to to me was 
pretty good. The song is just a rip-off. Wow. Yeah. Dan, you're yeah. really grumpy. No, seriously, I thought they would come up with something more original for a promo, and it's, we are Request 3, yeah, girls, that's the same as the theme. Dan, but <laughs> didn't you listen to the one that was out before? The one in the show? No, the one that um, Sephisto posted on EQD. No. I think I linked it. Did you? I think so, I, I did. I was here last week, but... Uh... I, I, I linked it in the Facebooks. Okay, busted. Huh. So it's the same song, basically. So, uh-huh. I, I probably would have still exploded at that. So yeah, double whammy. You did not, did you not listen to... No, I didn't listen to it. So I probably would have exploded at that. Really now? Oh my goodness. Well, whatever our opinion may be about that music video, at least... Um, most of us or some of us enjoyed it and the song was pretty okay. Uh, anyway... It's for what it is and yeah. not expect it to be more than it is. Mm, true, true. No comment. Yeah, I go... Probably safe for that way. But anyway, let's move on to the next topic and the next topic is shoutouts. My shoutout goes to you, Scribbler. Thank you for being on and entertaining us with your tales of Fancy and everything. stuff. <laughs> yeah, everything. Basically, it's just fun. And who was the doggy again? What was his? Na- what was her name? Her name is Suki. Yeah, and thank you, Suki, for. <laughs> you, know, you know the dog's name. We don't know her real name. <laughs> you stole my shout that. out, Norman. <laughs> you know you could just give it. You know you can just give it. It doesn't really matter. And thank you, Suki, <laughs> for coming on the show as a special guest. <laughs> Yeah, coming up next week, we're going to have an intellectual property war. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, to James Quirk and Kitsune Risu for, well, that awesome episode. Because that episode got me laughing in... Uh, let's just say that I laughed so hard in that episode. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So, what about you, Dan? I was going to give a shout-out to Darkest Night, but I took it back because of the picture. <laughs> uh, okay, one more. Darkest Night. Thank you. Thank you for freaking Dan out. <laughs> Notice we're not thanking you for the email. But yeah, thanks for the email anyway. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, thank you for the email. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Mm. I like the picture. Someone wants to freak me out. <laughs> what about... easy because I have the girophobia. No, no. Um, well, anyway, uh, Charlie, what about you? Yeah, my shout-out would have to be... Well, it has to go to Suki. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being on <laughs> <and> today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, uh, thank you very much, Gibbler, for coming on. It was a very entertaining session, so my shout-out goes to you as well. Um, my third shout-out would have to go to this dude called uh, Jelly, or Petroleum Jelly. <laughs> He's also a fanfic writer who's introduced me to a few fanfics, among them the cough. So it allowed me to, like, you know, get get into the world of fanfiction, which is kind of still kind of alien to me. Thank you very much. Finally. So, what about you, Scribbler? Ah, uh, there's quite a lot of people I would have shout out to, so I just have to put it under the umbrella of the heroic tale of heroically heroic heroes cast, because there's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, they're all my cast from my radio flight who have made fans and so much fun for me again. Oh. Okay. Since I started doing the radio play, since I was like prepping for it, so the first episode's due out in a couple of weeks. Oh, since awesome. I started doing this, it's just given a whole new lease of life and fun to everything I do. Plus, they all keep collaborating with me on fanfiction, so thank you to all of them. People need happiness. Yes, I'm good at being grumpy on my own, so people need to make me happy again. (laughs) You know, I I require a steady diet of stumbles and human tears. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Mind linking um, them to us in the chat? Uh, Yeah, you can do. There's quite a lot of them. Do you want me to add you to our chat? No, just link them out. The website. The website, if they have one. All right. Uh, Well, the heroic... Tales um, as actually is in other words. It actually isn't out yet. But when the first episode does come out, there's also going to be a Meet the Cast video where oh. I introduce the people who are involved in the project. So you can visit all their web pages and different things. Oh, awesome, so awesome. That will come out, and hopefully, everybody, hopefully everybody will enjoy it because this has been in pre production since uh, April. Okay, it's been a while then. Uh, well, yeah, it's been a while. Yes. Long time coming, yes. Long time coming and lots of effort. That's Hopefully awesome. Well, I hope I can do an interview with them too because the more interview we get, the more happy I'll be. <laughs> I think it's the interview with yeah, you all I, because she's part, of the, she's part of the crew. Yeah, she'll, she'll, be, she'll be our guest host and then like she can drill them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yep. 
<laughs> so right. if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at Norman at the MBS show.com and Daniel at the MBS show.com and Charlie at the MBS show.com. Yep. I still need to get used to that. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's account is at the MBS show. Follow, follow Sweetie Bot for updates on editing, what's going on with the episodes and stuff. And also chat with Sweetie Bot. And also me, you can chat, you can, well, chat with me, talk to me and stuff on Twitter. I have a Twitter. It's at Norman Sanzo. I post foods, games, and whatever interests me. And then, what about you? If you want your dose of perky pessimism and that assurance that somebody in Kuala Lumpur is having a worse day than you will ever have, yep, follow me at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. And Doctor? Um, I'm at D-R-C-X-Y. Uh, my Twitter is still in progress, but I'll get there soon. Trust me. What? Still in what? <laughs> still in process. Um, you process yeah. the Twitter. Yes, well, it's still under construction. I that cannot way. brain. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Scribbler? Do you have the Twitters? Uh, I do have a Twitter, but I don't tend to use it much. There's not really much point in people knowing what it is, because all it ever says is that I have favorite videos on YouTube. According to Twitter, all I ever do is things on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll yeah. be interesting to follow you because we, if they don't follow you on the YouTube, they can also follow you on the Twitters and it's almost the same thing. <laughs> yep. I think so follow Scribblers YouTube actions. <laughs> yeah. My YouTube uh, channel is known as Obaku. Uh, Obaku. Yeah. Obaku. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, and so the same goes for your Twitter, right? I think it is. <laughs> I've used it. Oh, here we go. Shine in again. Oh, so cute. Suki's yeah. Twitter is at <laughs> woof woof at Why woof, woof shut the hell up at twitter.com <laughs> <laughs> okay um, I'll, I'll add everything in the show notes and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page link will be provided in the show notes so I have been Norman Sanzo I've been Danny Lance I have been Charlie I have been Scribbler and we'll see you next week with less anger and rage <laughs> <laughs> and let's pay attention to talking about me. Indeed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You can keep yourself in up by never telling the truth. But when your friends are hurting, they'll be relying on you. So won't you set yourself free from this darkest of times? The truth comes out when you're singing. So let your sweet voice shine Cause I believe in honesty I believe in faith Whoa, I believe in the land Working in the land We're working in the things that we make With every letter of honesty Has a day That you can't take away I believe in honesty I believe in honesty It's a family way And that ain't lying I still think there's some out there that don't believe us. Maybe you need to tell them about it. Oh, if you ever get tired of never doing your share, of looking over your shoulder just to see who's there. Honesty is watching. It makes you strong. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. In I'm days. back. Okay. No! Ay, ay, ay. Sorry, computer just went down on me. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's the usual thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Scribbler, what were you thinking? 
<laughs> what were you thinking? Impure thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see how that could have gone wrong. Okay. <laughs> 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 If we were to have an after dark show, this would be fun. <laughs> oh no, please. No, go on, no, man. I don't know. Most of this is all accidental. <laughs> I know. I guess so. Anyway, you miss uh, most of them already. Oh my goodness. Most of them? What do you mean? The news. Yeah, the news. I think I miss all the news, didn't I? Um, you miss part of it. You miss two. You miss three. Yeah, uh, you were moving into guest time already, is that I heard? I yeah. Okay, yep. So, well, that'll be a wonderful outtake. <laughs> uh, anyway, starting in three.